Namaste, a very warm welcome to all our participants and resource persons who have joined to the second day of the Asia Pacific Regional Training on Gender Equality and Human Rights. As you all know, this three day online training program is being co organized by the Asia Pacific. Asian Pacific Resource and Research Center for Women, that is ARO and CNS, to help media and gender justice advocates work together to strengthen engagement around gender equality and human rights in the Asia Pacific region. This particular session has been designed for gender justice advocates. We have with us a galaxy of eminent resource persons to help gender justice advocates hone their skills to build strong partnerships with the media, increase their media outreach, and involve media as partners to advance gender equality and human rights. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we begin. Participants, please mute yourself while the uh, speakers present. Uh, please type in your questions and comments in the chat box or raise your virtual hand if you wish to speak. And we will need that particularly when we are doing the group exercise, the group work. We would like to hear more voices then. Uh, we need your support to make this session as interactive as, po as possible and not just a one-way conversation. So please do not be thrifty when it comes to clarifying your doubts and sharing your comments and queries. Also, as I said yesterday, we are living in difficult times. So please pardon and bear with any technical glitches beyond our control that might arise due to poor internet connectivity. Now we will begin with a poll to recap day one. So let's wait for the poll to be on the screen. And you have 60 seconds to answer. Yes, perhaps 30 seconds. It's okay, 30 seconds. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Is CEDAW legally binding treaty? Yes or no? Oh, a very simple question. Okay, 83% said yes, 17% no. So here, does the majority win? Yes, it is. That was a warm up exercise for all of us. And now we go into the, into our second days. Uh, we will first discuss how uh, to- hey, Shubha, there, there, are, there are three more, sorry. Just okay, sorry, I'm so sorry. Ones, just quick okay, ones, just okay, quick. okay, quick. sorry, sorry, sorry for that. Yes, the more the merrier, in, particularly with the polls. Yes, sorry. So this is great that, uh, yeah. So as uh, as we know, CEDA was adopted in 1979, UN General Assembly, and has been ratified by several countries. And uh, US is not one of them, if I if I got it correctly, like uh, yesterday from the experts. So great, thank you. All right, and uh, there is one more. This stood by the experts. And this will be on up, up on your screen. When was Generation <laughs> Equality Forum held? Oh, 96, 79, 2021. Yes, so it was held this year. You're very right. Yeah. 
Thank you. And uh, so it was held this year and it was held one, I think one in-person meeting was held in Mexico as we heard yesterday and then the other were in Paris and has come up with a very strong uh, program for uh, especially accelerating the financial and other commitments for uh, an, an accelerated acceleration plan, which we will share the links. Uh, all right, and this is the last one, promise. A very quick one, when was ICBD 25 held leading to Nairobi statement commitments? Yes, absolutely. Right. This was held in 2019 and uh, came up with the ICPD, uh, oh, sorry, the Nairobi statement, which, is, which has so important commitments reinforced by the governments and other uh, stakeholders. So great. Over to you, Shoba. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And uh, now we begin our day's work just after this warming up and a little bit of recap of what was there yesterday. And now CNS will help us understand how to forge partnerships and reach out to different kinds of media. And uh, because if we fail to plan, we actually plan to fail. So we have to do media outreach to best serve our identified purpose. And this will include the four tools which have been designed and which are there in the manual to help draft advocacy documents. So we will go through them. Uh, Bobby, you will share your screen, I think. Of course, the first thing is to have a media database and uh, regularly update that. That is, we, we need to have uh, contacts of the media personnel, I think that, that that is the first step and a very important one too, because if we do not know who to reach out to, how do we reach them? And then we move on to the four basic tools. And I think we will elaborate on them more today. Hi, Shobha, am I yes. on the right page? Yes, you, it is about organizing the media list. We have not reached okay, the four right. tools okay, yet. Okay, okay. We have not reached the four tools as yet. We are, we are still on that page. So you want me to scroll down? Yes, yeah, scroll down. I think okay. we, we will go on to the four tools, perhaps. Or if you want to say a little bit about this part, maybe. Uh, if you could okay. go to page 50, you might get the four tools there. Written. Okay. Yeah. Right. So uh, I think yes. uh, uh, yes. uh, Shubha wanted to... Uh, uh, so this is about building the database and uh, we, we can come back to that but basically uh, we need to it, it is always good at a community level to uh, pool media contacts and organize them as much as possible especially with in your own organization and our own organization networks uh, like-minded groups um, and uh, uh, and i will come to, and including partners and donors uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, you know, there, there are many uh, social media users or influencers. Uh, uh, so, so, so for instance, people who are writing on specific issues, you may come across uh, uh, in your own country in, or in your own region. And that, that is another uh, possibility of forging new relationships. And uh, um, 
so uh, city why this is also very important if we can organize our media list in excel sheet or something like city wise or sub national region wise because there are issues there are time when you want to reach out to your local correspondent in just one city there are things which you want to reach out to your uh, to the person who handles the national page in the same media organization or or maybe a global one because it's such a big issue such a big issue has happened like wire agencies writers etc or uh, other kind of uh, media uh, language wise is also important like in if, uh, for example i am currently in india so so hindi or which we depend upon which state we are in it is important to engage local vernacular languages especially in thailand cambodia there so many uh, asian pacific nations where local language is uh, not uh, is probably not english or english probably may not be the best uh, choice but of course we should also include english if it is relevant and type of media also, also another important you can uh, mention in that excel sheet whether it is tv print electronic radio big social media influencer blogger freelancer editor each one of them have a different role and shobha or i will uh, uh, come back to you on that uh, uh, this is another one we have enclosed in an extra we will we can go through this that we can you we can send multiple emails mass emails like hand to hundreds of people but and personalized ones so uh, if we develop an excel sheet like that and use a, a function in ms word mail merge so in the annexure of the module you will find um, we have tried to uh, put up a very simple um, uh, tool uh, on how to use mail merge with word file word and excel that is the only two program you need to uh, to make this happen and the free version of uh, mailchimp can also be used uh, uh, mailchimp is a, a, a online tool where we can uh, add about 2000 maximum 2000 emails and uh, send draft a html newsletter and uh, send out uh, to them uh so th there are many more ways to do this but we just wanted to uh, brief if it is uh, uh, if, if it is of any use of for, i think forging formal partnership with media uh, is also important so for example just imagine in, around international women's day so what so what i mean is like for example uh, if i am in bangkok and if a if a big newspaper or media house um, is partnering with a campaign then uh, uh, um, uh, then the pros are that there is greater likelihood of sustained coverage and synergy because they are the partners of that campaign too but um, and there will be enhanced spotlight on campaign on issues uh, more traffic uh, more visibility to the campaign because that is as shobha said the it's all about the issue and if issue uh, gets more spotlight great take credit get it done bang uh, you know the media house um, and other media may also take notice of the campaign etc and may have parallel media campaigns the other cons which we have observed is so if we partner with one media organization you might find that other media organizations may because of the competition they might be reluctant in engaging with it so it is so that is why the, uh, we have to see whether we we want to have a campaign in partnership with only one media organization or 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 maybe it is not a good idea and maybe there are times when you may think that uh, no no let us uh, it is our campaign it is people's campaign and all media is welcome into this so which is which is also of course great yeah and here in this part of the manual you will you will see uh, how we have tried to uh, put down very simple tools like uh, how uh, uh, shobha can you admit people please that yes, yes 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 yeah, yes yeah yes. okay that would be great because i am admitting them yes all right so um, you will find that uh, um, uh, we need to we should if we want to go ahead with a media partnership forging a formal media partnership with um, uh, with a with any one media organization either in in our country or in our city we, we need to research them well we need to zero in on a possible media partner and most important is that you need to check out what is happening for like um, on uh, are they supportive of the issue first of all 
or is it an opportunity for them to make them sensitize them on an issue so that they become uh, supportive which is really important and uh, uh, and you, you of course we need to see whether you, whether it is big enough for us to partner with or should we partner with them to thinking of pros and cons um, do this share similar values because if we are partnering with a media network which has been actually doing um, camp uh, you know things which are counterproductive to the issue we work on. For instance, on gender, if they are using gender insensitive languages, gender insensitive images, or they are, uh, there are stories of uh, violence in their own, within their own media organization, probably we don't want to partner with them, rather hold them to account, right? So, um, so we need to see, uh, probably this is also an important lens where we get to see, where we need to evaluate if we want to partner with this media organization. Um, there are media organizations which where there are allegations or history of sexual and other forms of gender-based violence at the workplace or uh, otherwise. Um, uh, so, so we need to, so this is why it, it is always great if we can um, uh, do some research before uh, 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 analyzing or, you know, or thinking whether we should do this or not. Um, uh, I think another important this this is we will cover this more in the next part. So that is why I'm not uh, going into uh, into um, uh, much detail. But here you will find that corporate social responsibility can the partnership be for a cause rather than a paid advertisement. This has worked in some campaigns where media organize when we approach media for uh, partnership, they might uh, quote you a cost that uh, they take you they take it as an advertisement. So this is not an advertisement. So th that is why it is important to forge relationship with the um, with the editors, so that uh, because they are the gatekeepers, and it is important for them to stand up. Uh, also, uh, Shubha has done, uh, which we will hear in uh, later in the afternoon uh, or later today. We will hear from her that in 2010 or 11, she studied all the newspapers of uh, major newspapers of the front page of newspapers of South Asia, and she found gender-based inequalities within those media organizations. So it is also those people who are working in the media, including editors and others, even they and their own staff need to stand up, rise up to the cause. And this is where our opportunity lies to sensitize them, to mobilize them, including the marketing team, advertising team, that this is a part of this their responsibility to make gender, uh, to ensure gender equality within media organizations um, as well. And that is why it should not be a paid advertisement. Rather, they should partner because they want to partner with this cause. And, and uh, that is an opportunity. It may work, it may not work, but it has often worked. And uh, what we can do, we can we can provide them people's stories, we can uh, sensitize them, we can we can try to, uh, you, um, you know, uh, 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 brief them on on what we went yesterday, for example, people's stories, photos, uh, organizing interviews, etc. So I think uh, 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 th this is all. This has worked in some campaigns, but again, um, it is uh, it. it uh, you know, this media has also become a corporate, and we yesterday we heard about corporate capture, and in many countries. Uh, they are churning out the narrative, which is probably um, uh, not helping the communities, rather uh, fueling a narrative which is uh, totally against the people but uh, and pro-corporations. So, but it is an opportunity for us to try to um, uh, reclaim the space. Uh, some There are some online tools which we wanted to briefly tell you, like Meltwater is a good one, but uh, uh, sorry, the, so, uh, but, um, uh, and, yep, sorry, we lost the page. Yeah. And, uh, and please feel free because uh, to suggest more because uh, what we have as of now. Uh, uh, can I interrupt participants? Please mute yourself. Please mute your device. We can hear a lot of background noise from somewhere. So please mute yourself. Yeah, Shubha, go ahead, please. Yeah. No, no, I'm just requesting uh, 
for muting. That that's all what I'm requesting. Yes, please continue. Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, uh, so, so that was about. Uh, I think we, should we go here now? Is that okay? Yes, yes, yes. You can continue. Yes, Bobby, you can. Continue. All right. Okay. I think this is a very uh, important part for me personally because this, we learned it the harder way to the other way around. Uh, sorry. Let, let me. Uh, this is the Dhaka traffic. I think which you are listening. Participants, please mute yourself. Sorry to repeat this. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Better now. Okay. All right. Okay, so here, uh, friends, uh, as a different as in your own organization, also, uh, different team people have different roles. So same here, you will find in, within a media organization, you will find that it is uh, organized differently, and it may not be necessary that uh, this is how it will be organized in your own place, in your own city, in your own country. Uh, it could be different, but by and large, you will find that there are there are people who are in um, uh, involved do, doing editing work, editors, different levels of editors. There are bureau chiefs, either they are uh, taking managing news of a particular specific locality, region, state, province, or country. There are news editors, there are feature editors, mostly related to magazine uh, or um, you know or other feature pages. A uh, uh, political editor, health editor. There could be health editor. Some some uh, media organizations have started having science editor too, which is a good thing um, to make sure that uh, uh, science reporting also gets a priority. So, uh, so there are different, then there are different beats or desk sections, which means uh, that uh, journalists, when they go in the morning, they mostly get assigned a specific task. Uh, they are usually covering the same similar desk. So for instance, health. So they will be assigned to go to the local hospital or local health issue, follow local uh, health related stories and file that story by a particular deadline. It could be the same evening. It could be, uh, you know, as the, as the editor has, they discuss with the editor. So if, or for example, there are people who are covering business and finance, the people who are covering science, industry, politics, sports, features, editorial, op-ed page, the opinion page, which is uh, adjacent to editorial often, city news, state page or state news, national news, global news, etc. Now, why is this important for us to understand? So for example, if you are making a case that gender financing is important, the finance, uh, then it is good to engage. It is an opportunity for us to engage finance and industry guy that the gender programs or related programs are not enough funded in your place, for example, just as a hypothetical example. So it is an opportunity for us to position uh, gender equality stories on industry page, business page, finance page, because we are articulating it like that. Similarly, science, uh, you, health is very clear, you know, uh, business and industry, uh, for example, what about gender equality within business organizations, within industry organizations, etc. What about wage rights? What about are they are, are they equitable wages or 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 unjust or unfair wages? Uh, uh, politics, you as we all know, uh, gender equality is a is a ultimately politics is the ultimate determinant of gender equality or development justice, for instance. So, so definitely it's a political issue. Actually, uh, if you, if you, and there's a long history of feminist rights movements rooted into staking a political uh, choice of, um, of, uh, for gender justice. It could be sports, uh, we could find an angle like that. Features, for example, features friends, uh, as you know, are non-newsy stories, which means that there is that there's less of a timeline issue. So it could be human human angle stories, for example. It could be um, um, uh, something which is which which either gets published tomorrow or a week later or a month later will still remain as important and relevant. So, for example, things that could get published often in magazines, uh, news sections, etc. Or sorry, magazine or feature pages 
other kind of um, uh, spaces where you find feature stories. Editorial, as you know, is written by the editor. And the op-ed page, if you want to play, position your article or article written by some thought leaders on that particular issue, uh, that is a space for them. And there is a usually in media organization, you will find there is one specific person who is in charge of op-ed page. Shubha, are we doing OK time-wise? Or Yes, we are doing OK. But okay, I, right, I right. just wanted to Absolutely. make an interruption here, Bobby. There is a very good comment from Paolo uh, that in Philippines, and perhaps this is true for other countries also, a lot of so-called media groups have sprouted nowadays, and fake news has become rampant. So that gives us uh, another point to be very careful when we are choosing who we are to partner with, as you had said earlier. Yes, Bobby. Right, a very important point, Paolo. Yes. And the, uh, fake news is very important, misleading news, misinterpreted news, uh, you know, uh, wrong, for, for example, in, in this is our challenge and Shoba and I almost daily get involved with this because our government here is telling us that uh, we are, uh, uh, just hold on, uh, we are uh, vaccinating N number of people. So they say they will tell you that. Uh, so our government government is telling that they are vaccinated. Vaccinate, they gave so many doses because that is what makes them look good. But what do we have to look? We have to look how many percentage of our population is fully vaccinated. That is more important. So so how many? How much of our population in my city, in my state, in my country is fully vaccinated? Not how many I have gotten how many doses have been delivered because if you look at the details so i'm just saying there are missed narratives also so paulo very important point yes we have to make sure that the media organization we want to partner with uh, is in line with the values of the campaign and the you know the the um, the ethics of the campaign too and um, uh, or you can develop your own a set of parameters to make sure uh, you check and do a full, thorough research. Coming back to the diff how the media organization is structured. So in op-ed page, you will find there is a specific person who is in charge, usually, who is in charge of op-ed page. So it is important. So if you want an article to be there, it is best that to coordinate with that person. City news is again, as I had earlier said. Um, uh, so when we are drafting, when we want to, for example, if I, if I have a press release, for uh, a local campaign, then I should be reaching out to a person who writes, a journalist who writes for city page or city news or TV or radio, city news, not state news, national news. But if I have something for the state news, state page, state uh, level thing or national news, then I have to articulate it differently. Then I have to reach out to the person uh, who actually writes for national news. And if I am sending it to the person who writes op-ed page or who writes an editorial, no, no, that's a wrong example, editorial. I will tell you why it's very soon. For example, person who writes business or finance, if I am sending that person national news related press release, that is not, that is a spam email for, or that is not, he, that person is, uh, will be not in the best of position to help, except that if that person is sympathetic, that person might forward it to the pers right person. That is true. But uh, so, so it is good to understand this so that we are really able to reach out to the right person within media organization uh, to have that impact. Now coming just quickly, one more point, editorial. Editor is very, very important. If we have good relation, if we ha can sensitize an editor on the issue we really care for and have that uh, editor support, that is a very important gatekeeper, uh, ga ga you know, gateway, because editor is the person who can influence where your news gets placed. It gets placed in city page, national page, front page, uh, lead story on the TV, prime time, etc. Blah blah. Radio, you know, like the kind of placement, the kind of prominence it gets. Uh, I think that is a very important part. Second, if we do not know. I don't know, for instance, if I if I go to Manila and I'm not very sure uh, whether the Manila Times uh, who handles op-ed page, then the best person for me to go and check it, this is the editor's office and, and tell the editor that I am interested in writing an op-ed and here is a copy. 
uh, can you please forward it to the uh, op-ed page editor or national sto story etc so editor is a very important um, gateway if, if if it is possible for you to have that layout is a uh, design team i'm not familiar with yeah so there is of course there are people who are involved with layout and design only so there is so um, um uh, there are copy editors for example uh, in usually in, in a newspaper now why is copy editor important because a journalist files a story and then goes home and the copy editor is the person who will uh, you know copy edit and put it in the newspaper and often the headline gets changes changes changed or the text gets edited out so if copy editor is sensitive to your issue the editing may not may probably not damage the story or change the story a lot so uh, but it is always a tricky thing but you know uh, and of course in a in a media organizations you might have advertising and marketing team too uh, uh, all right so uh, any questions reactions sh sh if you all want to share anything that's it please unmute and speak Right now, this is a good time. All good? Yes, it seems there is there's, uh, there are no questions in the chat box. Anybody who wants to raise their hand and ask, please do. Please go ahead. All right. Is this helpful? Not helpful? Is this of use? You all can speak and mute. Yes. Uh, hi, um, I'm Shamima from Bangladesh. This is very useful, though uh, I joined 10 minutes late, but I found it very useful because in, in coming days, actually, in Bangladesh, we are planning uh, lots of uh, interaction with the media uh, and the renowned uh, um, daily, uh, daily newspaper in Bangladesh. So I found it very useful that how can we motivate them to, to be an advocate for the gender justice. But thank you for your great presentation. Any more comments, please? Uh, may, may I add, yeah. um, Shoba? Yes, um, yes, I think please. also the, the photojournalists um, are also important um, to be friends with <laughs> um, because um, it's not just the articles, but actually visually uh, photos can capture and say a thousand words. And uh, in our experience, we've, we've met a lot of photojournalists and um, um, we've been friends with a lot of them. So it gets a lot of, um, we get a lot of front pages simply because over the years we've built a relationship with a lot of the photojournalists and national papers and um, they've also become advocates. So I think it's important that um, they're also part of the, you know, the, the building of our relationships and then um, providing additional trainings for them so that their lens can actually capture um, what our lens see as, as feminists, as activists, um, they become more sensitive to our issues. And even if we don't have an activity, they can actually, they have actually been sharing to us a lot of the photos um, that had been very useful for our advocacy. So I just, just wanted to add that. Thank you. Yes, Thank Bobby. You, very, very important point. Thanks. Photojournalists are extremely important and my heart goes out to them because everyone uh, with a mobile phone probably feels that he's a for or she's a photographer, but actually photojournalism is such an important field and they are really great advocates themselves. And as your photo speaks thousand words, more, very important point. Yeah. Thank you, Chi. That's very important. Sanjan, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts too. Shamima, thank you. Okay. So. And then Paolo has to say that, yes, and the Paolo is right. And I think we will be delving more on that a little later on, that any news related topic should be differentiated from national and local news. And I think Bobby had uh, touched upon that already, that that is very true, that where, we, where do we want uh, the new, who do we want to involve? Is it a local issue? We want to involve the local newspaper, new, local media, or at the national level? Yes, very right. And then Ekta says that this has got so much clarity, what has been told to newer folks like us.
yes please uh, participant please keep on writing your comments or speaking as as you wish as and when you wish. yes right so also please feel free to you know stop me or shubha so no yes. problem and yes. uh, shubha will uh, sh should we go to the next part or are we do okay we... then yes we uh, we can we have uh, maybe we have 40 minutes for the next part right now uh, there is a question from shanta that how can we change the attitude of media people to reduce ob objectification of women's body? And how can we use CEDAW? Yes. Uh, yes. So, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no, no. I have that question in front of me. I was just trying to open it. So, Ekta, uh, let me quickly respond to Ekta's comment. Yes. Hello, yes. welcome, Ekta. Ekta, yes. The, this presentation is actually what you are seeing on your screen is the manual, which was launched yesterday. So, I, I will and I've emailed you the link, but I will again email the link after the session too. Thank you. And uh, so, yes, so it has already been shared. Shanta, your question is very, very important. And that is uh, uh, the object objectification of women's body is a, is a very, uh, you know, a, a much deeper issue. And it is, uh, I think uh, there are so many uh, female and male journalists we have come across in India and other countries across the world uh, who are so uh, who are so deeply feminist and so angry, just like you and me, to see uh, how object objectification of women's body happens in media and communications and other uh, related fields, like including films and uh, advertising, etc. And they personally may not be supportive of it. But this is more about what uh, Varda Rina of ABWLD was sharing with us yesterday about a development justice model. So you and I, and all of us need to keep on, uh, you know, questioning the irrelevance of uh, uh, and and the whole, um, you know, the irrationality, the whole uh, inhumanness of objectification of women's body, how it defeats us on on on, um, or how it is failing us on on achieving development justice, and what governments have promised us the sustainable development goals, where no one is left behind. So definitely we can use CEDAW, not probably directly, you know, uh, but definitely it can be articulated. If we articulate objectification of women's body in the language where government's obligation to advance gender equality are being, uh, you know, undermined, then probably, yes, we can use CEDAW, we can use domestic laws, etc. to challenge advertising. And it has, so there has, has been successes in the past. So for example, uh, uh, the uh, women, lot of women, mostly women led, uh, women came together in 1970s against uh, Nestle's uh, aggressive advertising of baby food, formula food for infant. Uh, because it was so aggressive and it was so wrong because uh, of uh, obvious reasons. So they launched a campaign, uh, Nestle people launched a campaign, women launched a campaign, mostly led by women. They launched a campaign, a uh, boycott Nestle. And I think it was 1977 when that campaign was launched by Infact. Uh, now it is called corporate accountability corporate accountability.org so if you uh, so in 1977 that campaign became so powerful that uh, people stopped buying nestle products that nestle had to uh, uh, you know retract that but all the corporation had to retract that but also world health organization and other agencies came up with regulations and guidelines for um, uh, not undermining breast milk uh, with, uh, for, the, for the child and making regulations on, which are based on science, etc. Uh, there are other campaigns also uh, which has happened, but at the same time, uh, this uh, other, uh, uh, so for example, in India, there was a very recent campaign again, uh, against a very se sensitive advertisement which has which had come up by a particular outlet. So, and this campaign was by religious fundamentalists. So, uh, so it is both ways. So, but you are very right. Media should be, we should keep our pressure on as Vardarina had yesterday said, we should definitely ob uh, object 
and uh, criticize wherever we can on the object objectification of women's body. And if we use CEDO, if we use ICPD, Beijing platform of action, uh, generation equality uh, commitments, which we just heard yesterday and others, domestic laws, uh, please uh, do that and articulate it that way. Yes, Ekta, you can definitely ask something. Yes, please go ahead. Unmute and speak. Yeah, sure. Um, hi, everyone. Um, uh, thank you for this wonderful session. Uh, so my question was centered around how rape as a crime is reported. Uh, I'm from India. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I, it's, it's almost on a daily basis that I keep taking these screenshots of the headlines. I put them on Twitter and, you know, I uh, tag and say, uh, you could have reported this in a better way. You know, you, typically the survivor is the focus of the headline. Uh, and so is there a way to do a sustained campaign against this kind of reporting? Because the reporting itself, you know, the headline itself makes all the difference to the way you perceive the article. Uh, and there are some guidelines that have been set out by, I think, feminism in India or something. But these are not really followed. So, you know, uh, uh, so two questions. Uh, can we do a sustained campaign against this kind of reporting? And second, what is the way to get uh, people who are reporting like this to get more sensitized? You said the editors are important. So uh, is there a way to sensitize the editors? Yes. So thanks a lot, Ekta. Very, very important question. And this is a question which is very close to Shobha's heart. And Shobha has been a persistent campaigner against this, this uh, like you, Ekta, and like many of you, uh, against the insensitive language uh, which has which is used in media, which is not rights rights based, and which is not grounded in feminism. So uh, before I go to uh, Shobha, uh, let let me quickly say uh, that there are uh, because of persistent people like Ekta, people like Shobha, and campaigners who are here in the room. We we have laws now which are which can, that is why we there are certain safeguards certain obligations which media house has in different countries as per the domestic laws. It also because of the obligations that country has for international treaties which are legally binding treaties like CEDAW for example. Uh, but at the same time, we all, what Ekta has pointed out, we definitely uh, keep hearing uh, more of that. And the answer is yes, of course, we need to campaign for that. Yes, please keep the pressure on. Shobha, will you like to, uh, I'll hand it over to you. No, no, I just, uh, I was just remembering one sentence from, from what Ekta says that very, and it's good Ekta that you are actually taking screenshots of those, uh, that news which comes up because Always you hear uh, a woman was raped, a, a three-year-old girl was raped, 10-year-old girl was raped. It never says, you know, the, uh, that a man raped a woman. To me, that is also important. Who's, means uh, the person who is perpetrating the crime, that is, that is nowhere in the headline. A woman was raped. The man raped the woman. That, that never comes up. So active and passive voice, I think that's, that, that is very important. Uh, that, is just, that is just one aspect, one point which I, uh, I, have, I have mentioned, but, but you are very right. And uh, there is, uh, I go on to a comment by Yasoda who says that media too needs training in how to address issues related to gender inequality and human rights. And very true. And in fact, our next session today is for the media only to sensitize them and to uh, raise these issues which are coming up in this session also and to sensitize them how how should they be reporting and what language to use and what language not to use even when they are taking photographs or uh, what what should they take and what should they not uh, do so that is very important yes back to you bobby And there is a question from Kalyani, how can we engage media to prioritize SRHR issues in an accurate manner? Yes, so uh, I think that, that Kalyani, thanks a lot for this question. Very important one again. And I think we need to continue, continue on an ongoing basis. We need to continue to keep media uh, people engaged different media people engaged, informed, updated, 
And uh, uh, as many of you have pointed out, we have to point out as much as possible uh, uh, on if if there is about, about if it, something has been inaccurately, insensitively, inhumanly, or uh, reported, and we might uh, uh, require a bigger campaign too. If, uh, if if the if the media is having wrong impact on on, on issues we are working on, so uh, so definitely we have to continue. Uh, reaching out to them and try to keep them engaged and uh, and um, involved. And one one thing which has worked with several campaigns is if you have good if you forge relationships with within media organizations, uh, deep within the heart, there are so many people you will find. Uh, just like in your own community and networks, you will find people who have. Uh, uh, who are feminists in the heart and they uh, and supportive to the cause and that is extremely important to uh, to um, uh, you know that is the foundation of a relationship that is a shared value and commitment and uh, and that kind of uh, a religion uh, you know um, uh, uh, the partnership will will really go a long way uh, that in uh, as it depends um, around around when we are addressing these issues it because as i had earlier said you know when media organizations have uh, have asked uh, asked me and shobha sometimes in the past uh, about um, why should we do this uh, this is an advertisement but actually it is not it is not an advertisement it is this their responsibility to do this this is why they are there so they are not there just to report about films and fashion and industry. They are, the media is about news and news is about people. And there are, they are themselves people too. So you will find a lot of supportive uh, editors. And uh, later in the, uh, uh, in the second part of the session, you all are welcome to. Um, uh, like, for example, media is, is also here in the room right now. Uh, so, uh, so uh, but... Uh, uh, so coming back to the point, uh, so media organizations themselves have uh, uh, done surveys on glass ceiling and other kind of just uh, gender inequality within their own organizations, and they will be sharing a report. You want to say something, Pratichaya? Oh, yes. Uh, I just have uh, one question. Actually, I'm from Nepal. So uh, since I can't uh, type on my phone due to my visual impairment. Uh, so the thing is, like, don't you think I stayed in India, studied there from JNU and all that. So the thing is, actually, do, uh, so I also feel that Indian serials are also responsible for the provocation of, uh, you know, um, actually uh, 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 for the provoca provocation Rocky. of, uh, uh, you know, stereotyping, uh, actually uh, the societal norms, the traditional societal norms uh, associated with women. So don't you, in on, on that uh, note, uh, don't you think these Indian serials must be banned completely because they, uh, as uh, Shanta was earlier talking about objectification of women, so um, these serials also propagate for the same. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. Thank you, Pratichaya. I think I'm pronouncing your name right, right, Pratichaya? Yes, yes, that's correct. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Pratichaya. And thanks a lot for joining in, by the way. So, yes, uh, I'm an FLTP grad. Okay. Graduate, so I just got uh, an invitation. So that's wonderful, great. great, absolutely so good. So welcome. So Pratichaya's point is so important, and you and and so true. There are so many uh, soap opera serials, TV serials, radio, t uh, newspaper content which we see, films, uh, songs, etc., which which are churned out by corporate industry. And you will see uh, what the point which was earlier ma made about uh, uh, objectification of media. Oh, sorry, of of women or other. Um, uh, things uh, in in the in interest of the and also you will find a link between the capitalism uh, patriarchy very very clear link 
between between this these tools so even within these uh, uh, communication channels whether it is film production or soap opera or tv channels what priti chaya has just said is so bang on spot there are so many films not just in india even in other cultures and countries even hollywood you will find where objectification of women where the values subconsciously or consciously which they are promoting knowingly which they are promoting uh, is actually harming us harming the people and just for minting more money and i will give you a ve- another a very different example but to make a point in um, when studies were done in early 2000s of, of tobacco product placement in hollywood films and bollywood films it was done by university of california san francisco campus and ministry of health government of india then they found so us found not indian government the us found that uh, the tobacco company pays hollywood films to place brands tobacco brands to uh, to to buy time so that the lead film stars and fi- in that film are using tobacco products so because that was a very effective means of portraying tobacco use normalizing tobacco use glamorizing tobacco use and especially catching the fancy of children and young people and it they the film industry took money for that why will they do it for free when they know that this is one of the most powerful tool to reach out to young people and uh 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 you know try to come uh, try to lure them into tobacco use because tobacco industry is losing more than 80 lakh 8 million people every single year of people who die because of tobacco use so they need to recruit more than 8 million people young children and young and most of the tobacco addiction begins before the age of 18 so this is what they were doing so they were using films and when you and i as consumer see those films since generations if you see older films you will find much more tobacco placement and you will find the how camera zooms in on specific brands not just tobacco brands you might see it some other food chain brand some other car brand some other kind of a consumer good brand and you can definitely doubt that there could this could be a brand placement in that film now coming back to the gender one definitely your your ekta your point is oh, sorry the pratishya your point is extremely valid and we all need to uh, you know point it out but it is part of the larger struggle to uh, for for uh, gender equality where we we need laws in place uh to ensure that this does not happen and again coming back to the tobacco example the law scheme in in india we have a cigarette and other tobacco products act because of the global tobacco treaty the global tobacco treaty which is ratified by over 180 countries even nepal has ratified nepal has ratified the whole of asia pacific has ratified it except indonesia so uh, all the countries in asia and the pacific has ratified the global tobacco treaty and it is a legally binding treaty so there is an article i think it is article 13 on tobacco uh, uh, st- uh, advertising promotion and sponsorship sorry yeah so uh, so indian government has a law banning tobacco uh, showing of portrayal of tobacco use in films or there are specific regulations warnings etc which they have to show it is not ideal but this is uh, after cons- consistent pressure from the scientists doctors tobacco control advocates uh, legal uh, changes has happened at the global level and of course in the domestic context as well so uh, i think we keep we need to keep on pushing uh i mean mobilizing and convincing people uh to stress for uh, uh news whether it is radio tv newspaper film advertisements etc which are reaching you me our families our loved ones our young people our children our, our grandchildren you know so uh, and so that they are not misleading just like you and i don't want our family our our family's children our loved ones to see a wrong misleading advertisement of a food product which is actually unhealthy we don't want uh, children to be misled to be lied to be deceived that this is very good for you 
when it is actually very bad right so we don't want advertisements to lie to them so we want police government to stop such kind of lying deception tactic by the industry so say, same way we also need laws and regulations so that go because government of india nepal all the country in asia and the pacific has promised to advance on gender equality whether you look at cedo you look at icpd you look at generation equality you look at beijing beijing commitments sustainable development goals domestic laws and if there is any gap we have to uh, make sure that we fill it up so coming back to the communication approach and that is why we are going to do what we are going to do today i think so, we uh, have a hand raised sorry for yes. the interruption all right uh, sorry for alga suren so uh, yes. wants to say something yes please go ahead hi hi hello everyone thank you thank you very much uh, i'm from mongolia yes and i have a question uh, everyone might uh, have been heard about that pensions chinese uh, tennis player pensions case recent case it's uh, now at the center of the media uh, chinese uh, tennis player uh, she uh, she is alleged that she is alleged uh, that she is sexually harassed by one of the communist party members and now she is disappeared and uh, some say that it's the center of the attention all over the world and some say that it's the, it's the miss western media making this case uh, big and bigger and we all know that uh, some of the uh, it's uh, media in china are very much censored and in this case i i, I don't know what who to believe how to say who to believe is there any best way to clarify and find the uh, neutral news? Does, uh, does my question make sense? Yes, yes. Uh, Dolgar Suren, right? Am I pronouncing your yes, name yes, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, very important point, Dolgar Suren. And my uh, all our support to you. And uh, and to this and the people who are affected by the case definitely and there are so many more such cases and you uh, so I think in this case for example even if a media is censored in China or in other in in places where we work in it is it it may help if you re, if uh, the issue if we try to engage media outside the region the international media national media etc outside the region wire services. It's, um, and others and this is why we are going to talk about the, the upcoming sessions and this is exactly what we are going to talk about in the upcoming sessions uh, uh, so quick answer is yes i will give you a very quick example of, of this like um, there was a campaign in 2002 or 3 against a coca-cola bottling plant in varanasi in india and um and the farmers and the were protesting because they were the the plant was taking out too much of groundwater and they, there was no water left for them to uh, water their crops and there were other issues also but the coca cola plant had bought influenced the government and bought the media locally because they paid huge advertisements to the news media so what they so what the activists did was they reached out to the national media uh, and also to the Coca-Cola headquarter at Atlanta in the uh, stakeholder shareholder meeting. Sorry, there were people who raised this question in the shareholder in Atlanta, and uh, that is how the news broke out of what was happening in in that small plant in not small plant but in that small place in Mendi Ganj in Varanasi in India, and uh, that it was very difficult for Coca-Cola to uh, to kill that news. Uh, or to um, kill that movement. So I think uh, th in, this is a very important issue. Lo if local media is not supportive, if there is censorship, if the local gov if there is, uh, then we need to find more creative, innovative ways to reach out uh, to and be heard and use media and communications in this today's age and time to try to um, uh, try to put more pressure on the on the local government to hold the perpetrators of that crime to account um, it's an ongoing challenge and uh, all support to that 
Yes, Shobha. Yes, How are I, we going time wise? No, we, I think we should move on to our four tools now. So we we are a little okay. short of time, but otherwise otherwise we are going well. And okay. uh, a discussion we cannot be very very strictly bound by time. Yes, we try to stick to it, but good that we have had such a, a vibrant uh, response from the participants. Very good. So uh, we can go now to the four tools we have. Yes, Bobby. Yeah, yeah I, I will just respond to Yasuda Kura. Yasuda, no, your yes, point yes, is. Sorry. Hmm. Yeah, sorry for this. Just one right. minute, Shubha, please. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, she asked that, uh, Yasuda asked that, can, can CEDAW recommend? Yes, hmm. CEDAW should recommend. CEDAW, you see, our governments are the, the ones who have same, every government who has ratified CEDAW has same uh, uh, power, privilege to raise an issue to uh, one vote, etc. when the negotiations happen. So they should be the ones, if we lobby with the governments, if we, if we make, if the decision happens in CEDAW uh, process, then it becomes legally binding and it becomes an obligation for all the governments um, who have ratified CEDAW uh, to, uh, you know, to implement that so yes the other way is that of course we need to lob push for domestic policies local policies etc depending upon our own national uh, constitutions legal framework policy framework we live in uh, let's hope it happens and cartoons uh, probably you have right right yeah of course cartoons are very very powerful not just for school curriculum and children but also for adults i think for me also i, I like it I, i'm not very sure whether i have grown up or not but <laughs> But I love cartoons, definitely, and very powerful uh, means of communicating very complex and very difficult things. All right. So, uh, 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 sorry, yeah. before we move, then I think Abhiti, Abhiti Gupta says that media spaces like Khabar Leheria need to be promoted. Abhiti, in a nutshell, can you just share with the other participants what is Khabar Leheria about? I, I would like to hear from you. Just very uh, briefly. Hi, yes. everyone. Hi. Uh, yes. I'm Abhiti, and I'm from India. Uh, Khabar Leheria is is one of the local uh, news uh, media uh, from uh, in India. Uh, all the reporters there are women, and you know it's uh, it's it it brings out reports from local spaces. And uh, I mean they are they are very active, and like their approach is is rights based, and you know they uh, they they do a lot of sensitive work. Uh, so yeah, like I mean, the uh, spaces like that uh, should definitely be, uh, you know, uh, given enough uh, limelight, uh, so that uh, you know, so that they uh, they become they 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 are like mostly they become a space where like that people can look up to, you know. Uh, that's the that's 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 how I think it. And I, obviously, like if you want to add anything, please do that. And uh, other thing that I was mentioning uh, is about like how, uh, you know, the education system uh, within media schools and uh, 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 like the education should also be, you know, have have some ethical uh, norms that, you know, that are that are uh, taught, I would say, or that are introduced to people who are getting into uh, the field of media. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Thank you for the opportunity. No, no, no. Thank you, Abhiti, for making really very good points that uh, uh, at the local level, we need also a lot of sensitization from the media, for the media also. And uh, as I know, because one of my students has, uh, has been part of Le Khabar Leheria. For, she was there. I do not know if she's still working there or not. And uh, sensitizing women also and uh, through the uh, low in local language and uh, through local outreach. I think that is very, very important. If we really want the global treaties to uh, actually be implemented at the ground level. So Khabar Leheria is doing good work and I'm sure in other countries also, there would be such uh, media outlets working. Yes, that's from me, Bobby. And now can we move ahead? Right. Okay. So thanks a lot. And um, the, uh, another point which she raised was about the media schools. So definitely, that is another opportunity for all of us to influence media schools to have, uh, you know, to catch them young, so that they really can become fab 
if they, they are all they must already be very great feminists so but they should really be have great concepts about gender equality and stuff and when they go out into the professional world and try to preserve them and strive for that yes yeah, so definitely that is also a very good idea shamima so, sorry yeah. sorry shamima uh -huh. has to say that this is very important information but to sensitize media is very difficult as they have their own values and i think yeah. for that uh, ongoing dialogue and conversations are very important to sensitize anybody i think uh, dialogue is important yes boss yes see i have see there is a very important quote shamima which i often remember uh, you know in these times uh, especially and that is the answer is always no unless we try right so we have to try even if they don't uh, 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 they're not receptive to receptive right now one day they will because they are also human being this is what we should believe and we should keep striving keep trying keep being innovative what what works what does not work so don't do so keep trying that is very important they, they, uh, um, and keep contextualizing i think that is also very very important why they need to do this why why it is wrong and probably you will cut across uh, let's so all power to you i think the, uh, before shubha goes to the the section i think this is this is a very good part of of the manual also have a good part that defining a clear purpose and identifying approaches for media outreach so these three guiding questions or probably they could be more but at least these three are, are really relevant when you when we are trying to do media outreach when we are trying to do media outreach whether it is in china case which was just shared or in any other uh, you know uh, any for any other purpose so what are you trying to achieve with the planned media outreach are we trying to uh, get a coverage are we trying to get the government head uh, heard he, uh, hear this is news are we trying to put pressure on the government are we trying to uh, so what are we plan trying to do uh, and uh, it could also mean that are we trying to get something published on national page local page a feature page radio dr shukla is amongst us he is with the, uh, the all india radio uh, very the largest radio in the and the most powerful media in the, in the country in india what approaches will best serve the purpose you have identified above for the purpose uh, and approaches me we will uh, we will see very soon uh, uh, what what do we mean by that and what kind of activities are relevant to carry out the identified approaches most effectively so for example we might need to do media outreach for uh, ask a very important uh, case which was pointed out by um, uh, dolgar suren if i pronounce the name correctly sorry dolgar suren so uh, um, it could be that reason it could be a campaign launch maybe you are launching a campaign maybe you are launching a report of your organization or network or people you work with maybe you have gone to a meeting uh, or a conference and you want to uh, uh, write about it or do something about it that is another way um, uh, or you want to organize a press conference you have something to say something uh, which requires a press conference or you want to respond to the latest data on the issue as someone had pointed out earlier in the meeting often we hear uh, wrong news incorrect news wrongly interpreted news misinterpreted news uh, totally uh, uh, skewed analysis for example or something which missing the point um i'll give you another example which i often hear people say that we need bigger roads we need larger roads we need express ways to make road safer road will not become safer by making bigger roads road will become safer when public transport is safe and comfortable for each one of us when public transport is so good that no one needs to own a private vehicle then roads will become safer for everyone when a child can walk to the school on uh, then the roads will become safer not the but what are we doing we are making roads which are become safer for or comfortable for the fastest of cars so we i think the whole analysis needs to be but, but but uh, you know i think we that is another uh, reason why we need to do keep on doing media outreach and what do i do for that i write op-eds for for that i produce videos on that i keep on uh, putting my point across challenging 
decisions of government which are probably may not be uh, um, uh, taking us towards SDG. So, sorry, anyone wants to say something? Yes, Shubha? No, that's fine. Okay. All right. Or somewhere, similarly, there could be emergency or a crisis, just like, uh, you know, uh, uh, was pointed out by Dolgar Suren. Uh, so I think that yes. is also an important, there could be an emergency, flood, climate, natural calamity. Let us not call it natural calamity, because often these are man-made disasters, and actually man-made, because these are usually male decision makers who are uh, responsible for uh, landing us in a position where we are in currently supportive editorials placing op-ed articles there are so many things which we can do so i just want to this is when i don't want to go into a long huge list but the point here is that there are so many more media outreach may mean very different things and once we are clear on what kind of outreach we need coming back to the guiding question what are we trying to achieve what approach we need and then what, how do we need to do that? So the things which we need to do that for launching a campaign might not be the same what you need to do for, to organize a press conference or might not be the same for uh, organizing media around emergency or crisis or, or other things. Any, any, any question here or any comment, reactions, any new things? Thank you, thank you, Mr. Bobby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have given me so much insights and yeah thank you again uh, thank you Dolgar Surain thank you for your comment here yeah. uh, all right so before I keep boring you uh, this is a good time show by anything no or no 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 and we are not something? getting bored please okay so friends, this is a very quick, uh, uh, do we have some time, Shubha? Just yes, yes, minutes? yes, yes, of course. Yes. All right. So here I will just like to uh, uh, see, this is the only one which I am doing and rest you all need to do. So please be ready to unmute yourself and speak. So this, this is some suggested things which I felt that uh, I, Shubha and I will like to do if we have to launch a campaign. So just imagine a hypothetical situation that we have to launch a campaign tomorrow. What do we need to do? So we might, we may like to organize a press conference and tell invite media that we are launching a campaign on uh, to mark 16 days of activism against gender violence. So we are launching a local campaign in our community. Um, we are concerned about the rising gender-based violence, especially during COVID times, also during COVID times. Then we will also like to come up with social media strategy of the campaign. We will like to write tech content, text. We will like to come up with some graphics, images, photos as uh, for is our, our campaign goals. And uh, we will come up with hashtags, popular hashtags for 16 days activism campaign. We will uh, tag right groups, organizations, local governments, mayor, other, uh, other officers. And we will engage those who like posts, etc. We will also do media engagement during the campaign, during the campaign, when we have launched it. So we'll tell them that today we are organizing a protest, today we are organizing a rally, today we are organizing a candle march, today we are organizing um, some other kind of activism. So, uh, or issue that on 1st of December is World AIDS Day. So on World AIDS Day, we are working with HIV positive groups in the in our community and uh, talking about violence in context of HIV, et cetera. Or disability, International Day of, of Persons with Disability is on 3rd of December. So we are talking about, while we will be talking about gender-based violence. So th th these are the opportunities for engaging media during the campaign, 16 days campaign. We will be issuing press releases in appropriate languages. In my context, it is Urdu, Hindi, English. Uh, su supporting, we, have, we need, to, we need uh, to request for photos and uh, we need photos for that. We need, we need we, uh, to help journalists have interviews with the uh, experts who believe in our campaign. Uh, we can connect them. Uh, radio people have unique needs. Dr. Shukla is a better judge who is amongst us here from All India Radio. Uh, of TV, for example, they may have different needs because they need footage. 
uh, we need to track coverage we, what is getting printed why do we need to track it because so that we can post it on social media we can share it on our circle to have even enhanced impact campaign impact sharing coverage on social media website etc we can write an op-ed editorial these are the some of the things which we can do we can also consider a media partnership if there is a local media house which is um, in line with the values and um, um, you know the, uh, the ethos of the campaign and uh, of course if we can engage the local government uh, ministries etc in the campaign or get their support like-minded then it's even better but uh, because it's up to actually it is uh, that is where the change happens so there's so many more things this is just some of the ideas but you you can imagine that if you think about it then there's really so much more which we can do around campaign launch and it they, all this gets decided how much how what do we have what kind of capacity do we have etc so any uh, there is a question from suren uh, nath nayak that uh, can you suggest any strategic approach for media outreach in remote for remote areas where presence of other media uh, mainstream media outreach is less yes like can we resort to mass media social media etc yes suren nath nayak yes of course we should resort to social media if it is possible uh, mass media also and usually you will find that even in the rural remote areas we we do have um, uh, so some some kind of a, uh, media uh, there or it could be a page in some newspaper which covers the news uh, or someone responsible in for news in that area so please reach out to them and this is uh, what we are uh, this is uh, what we are, we are just discussing too it could be very different for the kind of media outreach what suren nath nayak is talking about would be very different in a very remote rural area and uh, then what it will be in uh, in a big city so one thing which may often work in re remote area is that uh, uh, it depends but usually you might find local newspapers or of nearby towns which have which which have some which can give some space there uh, radio is probably the a media which has the largest reach in the country uh, social media definitely has a huge reach and if it is relevant in the in that setting in that remote area setting definitely and if your purpose is that remote area issue needs to be heard by those sitting in the capital of the state or country then please engage the media in that city uh, in the capital or state capital of the because you want to highlight an issue which is in a remote area so probably the best thing will be to uh, if it is a strategic so there's a lot with thought that is why um, you know we were talking about um, these three questions what are you trying to achieve with the planned media outreach so if you are trying to influence the chief minister or prime minister or other ministries then probably uh, the media which can influence that kind of decision uh, we should reach out to them so it could be the state capital national capital etc and what approaches will best serve the purpose yes again should we write a press release should we organize and help organize interviews of co correspondents who are sitting in national capital state capital nearby towns with those people in the remote area or uh, or should we help them organize a visit or what kind of things we can do and what kind of activities are required to like uh, activities may we will come back come come to that dive we are just about to dive deeper into that like writing press releases and stuff uh, paulo for you when sending out yes. media advice to press yes. conference uh paulo it's a very important question but the answer is uh, i don't have an answer sorry for that because it could depend a, a lot uh, on um, uh on from city to city country to country it can differ a lot so best is uh, to check with the person uh, a journalist uh, from or uh, where you where we need to have that kind of a press conference uh, what is the best time to organize the press conference uh, so for example in the city where i am in afternoon is the best time uh, because in the evening journalists are busy filing the report so that is why but it it may not be the same in delhi it may not be the same in chiang mai 
or it could be very different. So please check with them. How many days prior to the event? I think if you are organizing a press conference, then the press invitation should go at least a day before, but even longer, it is a good idea to, to brief, to remind people that we are going to organize a, a press conference. Uh, so if we can uh, inform press uh, journalists beforehand, that is the best. But at least a day is a good uh, ideal. But in many situations, it is an urgent press conference. That is a different story. Um, and when we are in, inviting press for press conference, don't forget the photographer or photojournalist. Yes. It's a question from Queen. Uh, How do you develop relationships with editors if you are a new and inexperienced media person? I think uh, the uh, you know uh, it is it's, this is a very uh, Queen very important question, but uh, the answer is very could be very subjective and very different. And there's no trick. You see, uh, I think it is about relationships, and we all as human beings um, um, have our tendency to develop relationships. So it's good to meet them probably. If not possible in person, then at least um, now you know. Uh, engaged with them as virtually or other ways. Um, again, as, as I had said that, uh, um, see, it is we as gender equality advocates are, uh, so what media is trying to do, uh, let us, let me put it this way. If any one of us is trying to do anyone, whether it is gender equality advocates, we are, we may be working with nonprofits, we may be working with media organizations, government agencies, whosoever. If what we are doing is not socially just, and if it is not ecologically sustainable, then it is not a feminist agenda. Then it is not going to serve the purpose of our governments, which have committed to sustainable development goals where no one is left behind. So they, that is why they cannot harm we cannot harm the the progress our governments are trying to make towards sdgs or other commitments for a socially just and ecologically sustainable world so um, i think we need to uh, uh, agree on at least this is a minimum common agenda of the editors also they don't want their media houses to be branded anti you know, patriarchal, sorry, not anti, but patriarchal. They do want to be called, uh, everyone, all of us wants to be, look to look good or to be, good. let it, we all try to be good. So it is, but they are also under tremendous pressure of different corporations, advertising, advertisement revenues, marketing, advertising divisions of their own media houses often. So, uh, uh, but having said that, we, you, just like yesterday, we heard from so many leaders, we need to keep pushing the envelope. We need to keep pushing the envelope, every taking us closer to the goal of gender equality. And uh, uh, very often you will find that, you, uh, you know, if you meet 10 journalists in your own local community, you will find more supportive uh, relationships then us relationships which are not at all supportive at all, you know, which are deeply patriarchal or which are not responsive. So most likely uh, you will have a, uh, it, it is always a challenge. We all are trying to figure out a way to, uh, uh, to build stronger relationships. Anything else Shobha Umanga has written? Yes, uh, uh, Umanga, your, your comment is very, very important. That uh, one challenge is that multiple media campaigns are conducted by different stakeholders on the same issue, which leads to multiple messages in the discourse, which ends up diluting the interest. Very true. And that is why forging partnership, that is why people who are campaigning for a similar cause, like-minded, similar values should come together so that we have one stronger campaign and um, uh, with more unified voice and a lot of it is lot of it happens see 16 days activism campaign which have, begins from 25th november to 10 december is a very good example because it it articulates 
sexual and gender based violence in context of several more days reaching out to several more of those silos so for example on 1st of december it engages people who are working on hiv and aids in context of sexual and other uh, and other forms of gender based violence on 3rd of december it engages persons who with disabilities and groups working for disability rights and in and inclusiveness and likewise you will find every single day has a whole different thematic area which is so so important to engage and articulate and reach out to because that is a common agenda for forging partnerships for a unified uh, more unity in, ca in campaigning for gender equality it's a brilliant campaign we do not find this in tb world so for example for just for an instance now we are seeing more tb voices talking about tb and hiv co infection but if you, those of us who have been involved with tuberculosis we know that 10 years ago 20 years ago this was less of a issue this less of a uh, 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 co this was less common it was less common but tb hiv co infection was not less common tb tuberculosis was the biggest cause of death for people living with hiv 20 years back and even now even in 2021 which is so sad because tuberculosis is preventable curable but it continues to be, be the biggest cause of death imagine the dichotomy so, uh, so so what i'm trying to say is that there are several other sectors which need to do so much more to to see that uh, uh, world tb day is also a women's day world aids day is also a women's day and feminist agent feminist groups have done that they have shown it and that is a brilliant so that is why i say the 16 days activism is a brilliant uh, way and it culminates on the human rights day on 10th of december too because it reaches out to several different silo silo vertical uh, campaigns which are very important campaigns i'm not trying to say people those campaigns are, uh, are not important. They are very, very important, but probably uh, we all need to uh, look at more linkages for a more unified and uh, integrated response. Neeraj Manali has asked a very important question that how we can reach out where we don't have any media links or internet, especially in remote areas like hills and border areas. Very, uh, yeah, very true. Uh, that is a, a very big challenge. Uh, it's a whole different context. Uh, yeah, so uh, if there are issues in such an area where there's no internet, if there is no, no media at all in those areas, difficult to reach areas, hilly and border areas, then those issues need to be brought out. Probably near, uh, you need to, we need to look at again, the guiding questions here that uh, uh, what are we trying to achieve? Are we trying to, for example, talk, uh, whatever the issue is, who needs to hear it? Yeah, if you think the state government needs to hear it, let us reach out to the state capital media and try to uh, encourage them why they need to hear it and uh, why they need to cover this. And uh, uh, again, uh, and who is the best reporter who can help us with that? Maybe uh, the district reporter or something like that. What approaches will work? Uh, it could be uh, reaching out to the state or national capital media, depending upon the issue. It could be a press release. It could be helping uh, the national or state level or district correspondent interview uh, via phone or some way um, a person who is in the remote or border area on the issue, which is very important, et cetera. And what are, how are we going to prepare for it? That is exactly what Shobha is just going to dive into. Ekta, as non-patriarchal feminist people, how do we tackle the current misinformation floating across the internet? Yeah, thank you, Ekta. Very important one. That is a uh, that's a persistent challenge which you and I and all of us probably in the room will agree that uh, we are confronted with all the time. Uh, so please keep on challenging. And uh, I don't. I think trusted publications. Uh, I think you. Will, uh, we should trust everyone, but double check. That is what I will say. Even if it is Lancet, you know, just two, two three days ago, we I was having a conversation with someone. So yes, you are very so. Uh, so probably the data which is in the on the UN organization websites, government websites, we should we should have a look, but um, uh, try to contextualize it how reliable it is, how reflective it is of the real situation on the ground. 
uh, if there are gaps in that data, uh, if uh, how inclusive is that data, etc. So there are cert certain data which you which we might go with, uh, which is dished out by the government or UN agencies or other agencies. Uh, and there are certain data which we might uh, take it with a pinch of salt uh, because we have more, um, uh, you know, uh, our analysis might be a bit different on that. Yeah. Shubha, how are you going, doing time-wise? Welcome, Selena. Uh, I see Selena. Uh, very happy to see you here in the room. Welcome. Thank you. Selena has been a long time activist for uh, making lives of people living with HIV better, safer, and this world a better, safer place for everyone. So Selena Menzies uh, salutes to you. Welcome in the room. You're a big inspiration for me personally. Thank you, Bobby. Okay. All right, so Shobha, are we doing okay time-wise? All right, so here, uh, friends, we were talking about like, these are the things we can do with campaign launch. So this is another scenario. Imagine we are launching a report uh, tomorrow. What should we do? Come up with ideas in your own city. So come up with ideas which are in your own city and don't worry about this list. This is just some of the rough thoughts which we have written, but uh, they could be, these may not work at all. Like Neeraj Manali had just written, about a rural remote area where there's no internet, no media. And if the people in that area uh, launch, want to launch a report, what should they do? So Neeraj needs to think about that, but you all need to think about where you are right now. So uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, I wanted to say something, but I was on mute, I think. So oh, I could not be heard. So uh, uh, just, uh, just one sentence uh, in reply to what Ekta has said, that are they, uh, somebody said uh, uh, that do not believe in the WhatsApp university because a lot of current information circulates through that. And I, uh, I have a personal experience of that. Uh, somebody sent uh, a message which had been forwarded many times and it said that a, a doctor in India finds a cure for cancer, very uh, catchy headline. And there was a link given also there. Generally, when we get messages on WhatsApp, we, uh, and very often people quote to me, you know, no, no, this, is, this has to be true. I got it on WhatsApp. When I clicked on that link, just to confirm, it was some other news not connected to cancer cure at all. So I'm just saying that there are ways and there's a lot of misinformation floating around. And as Bobby said, we need to check, recheck, and double recheck about, about the truth of that. So that is just what I wanted to share with you all. And then Umang is saying that I can't see what Bobby is sharing, only a black screen which says Bobby is sharing screen. Umang, Umang has sent this message. Yes, Bobby. Bobby, are you on mute? Sorry, sorry. Yes, I was on mute. So, Umang, can you try, uh, if you are looking, if you are watching us on a mobile device, probably, then can you just try, try swiping left uh, or right? Bobby, Bobby is black for everyone, actually. So, I'm also seeing the black uh, screen. I could see the screen now because I'm seeing a blank screen, but I could see the screen. Now, can you all see it? I can see it. But, uh, can they... everyone see the screen now? Yes. Okay. 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 Thanks. Okay. Thanks. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Kamala. Thank you. Thank you, Kranji. Thank you so much. Okay, so friends, here on the screen is a scenario that we are going to launch a report. So what should we do? Please, uh, please uh, at least few of us should you should share. Yes. Imagine you have to do it in your own city, in your own country. What 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 should we do? 
this is what we have written like this is what we will do we will in our because this may work in the city where i am in currently it we may organize a press conference we will put it out on social media we will uh, reach out try to write an op-ed for the newspaper we will uh, share the report before the embargo with the uh, bigger journalists for wire services so that they can do prepare the article on the before the launch uh, we will also talk to Khabar Leheria and other media community media which is more rights based and will provide more sensitive coverage and we will try to uh, see where our news got co co covered in print in online in tv radio social media and we will share the coverage also on social media website etc for greater campaign impact and report visibility so this is just some of the thoughts and none of this will work for uh, situations like uh, neeraj ben ali for example where which he had just painted uh, about um, shared about a rural remote setting for example so uh, who will go first come on anything else yeah you you can raise your hand or that you put in the chat box or unmute or unmute and just yes, speak uh, yes unmute yes right not using your hand unmute and speak yes right yeah. one at a time please yeah uh, just this is samia just uh, i um we can we can share with our journalist group because so we uh, from the nari Pokho, we are contacting young women journalists also we can um, uh, share this report with our young women journalists. I think from the Nari Pakas part, we can do. Yes, very important idea, Samia. See, it's um, the, the very for all of us, it's so doable to share it with the journalist group and especially sensitive group media, especially women media. So great. Thank you, Samia. Any else, anyone else? We can also take yes. the other, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Shamima, yes. Okay, so in Bangladesh, actually, what we are doing? So we are doing in two ways. Uh, first of all, um, we provide the uh, worksheet uh, of the journalist and we provide the capacity building training of, of the things. We, we facilitate them in the field visit, and they, they can learn and think uh, from the ground and then they can report. This is one way. And in other way, we are partnering with the uh, national level, uh, national uh, level uh, newspapers and also the radio uh, and also the social media. And that we actually, we, uh, since we are partners, so we share our news collaboratively and we organize sessions collaboratively. Uh, so and and for this studious activism, actually, we are doing in the same way. So in both ways, we are working with the uh, uh, media uh, to to advocate our agenda. So through the media. Yes, thank you, thank you, Shamima. Very important points. Very important points. Yeah, and great to see, uh, know that uh, so much is happening. Yeah, thanks. Um, hi, this is Ekta. Uh, is it okay for me to speak? Yes, yes, Ekta. And I also see Abhiti's hand. But Ekta, you go first and then we will hear right. Abhiti. Go ahead. All yeah. right. Uh, so I am a very big believer in the speed of social media. Uh, and I think that some powerful... I, I recently concluded a Twitter boot camp uh, where, uh, you know, they taught us how to do these powerful campaigns. And uh, any powerful social media campaigns, because I'm just drilling down like a level below what you've asked, but any powerful social media campaigns, use of influencers and uh, use of communities on Facebook, which have become very popular, could be one of the ways in which uh, uh, we could, uh, you know, uh, propagate the message. Right, absolutely. So I totally echo what you have just said. And uh, I think at, maybe we, we uh, you need to help me with the, uh, you know, learning more about Twitter bootcamp and stuff. <laughs> great, great. Uh, yes, Abhiti. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, hi. Uh, so I was like, apart from what, uh, you know, has been, is, is being discussed, I, I also wanted to like just uh, put across that, you know, the media houses and uh, the independent journalists or photojournalists, I mean, they also should be like who are, 
who are like you know working uh, on the field and like putting the putting themselves on risk uh, i think there should be they should also be part of uh, you know defend the defenders uh, sort of groups uh, which are you know uh, working internationally for you know also their safety because uh, yesterday uh, you know in kashmir there is uh, one journalist who was arrested and uh, so you know those sort of um, uh, uh, sort of support system should also be there for uh, for uh, for journalists who are doing rights based work uh, like you know uh, but to like for also their safety because i mean there also in this, this is there is also an internal politics i believe which happens uh, within uh, those spaces and like you know what uh to be covered or what has to be portrayed in what way so that it reaches out to more people or you know it uh, it attracts more attention so yeah this is something that i wanted to uh, just uh, put across thank you yeah thank you abiti oh uh, thank you for raising this very important issue and friends this is a very important issue that many journalists who are doing uh very bold uh, coverage they actually they are standing up to their duty of being the fourth pillar in the democracy they they are often those uh, you know targeted by uh, state by government and uh, repressive forces and um, so that is a area where uh, so many human right organizations human right defender groups uh, they are coming in support of those journalists who have been targeted and i think the that had another uh, common platform where uh, all of us can probably uh, can uh, be one force with the media especially the media which is supportive to human rights and gender equality um emeline uh, will you like to share your um, uh, uh, thing which you have just thought which you have just shared or should i read it out if there is a problem unmuting and speak emeline de vera okay i can i will just read it out Uh, so emeline uh, rivera said that uh, uh, emeline will create a short video clip which can be posted on social media since it can be accessed by those in the remote area who can only rely on limited connectivity or use of data only okay great idea absolutely this is another way of doing it uh, and friends you all will be realizing there is no one way of doing it there is no one right way there is no right answer there is every answer is right because it depends upon what we are trying to do where we are trying to do what are we trying to achieve what resources do we have and this all these questions um you are going to be covered by shobha in the next uh, section so here uh, before we uh, quickly close in the interest of time you will find different scenarios that there are some suggested things which may not be relevant at all which may be relevant which may be some some of them may be relevant or you may be totally need to rewrite them and rewrite the whole thing so uh, so uh, but this is just for encouraging people to think of different activities which are required uh, when you are trying to launch a report or launch a campaign or covering your meeting conference and all this is in the manual all this is from the manual i am sharing the manual here or when we are about to organize a press conference so one of the things which i learned very early on was when we are organizing press conference was that often in the you know 25 30 years ago there were no electrical uh, there, uh, we were not uh, very sure whether the room where we are going to organize press conference will it have any electrical outlet because often the camera people lighting people etc they need to plug those things for tv for radio etc they need a certain uh, level of quietness or space for doing those kind of interviews or tv bites so there, there is a lot of coordination which goes on and a lot of preparedness which goes on things have changed a lot over the years and from different place to different place you will find things are very very different so uh, so go through this and you will find uh, uh, things are very different and this is this is another important section where i will just cover one any one of them uh, i am not covering emergency or crisis here because there is a whole different module for that and that, that we will be diving very deep into this and this is a very important part of the manual even for me and shobha so uh, so for example if we want to respond to latest data 
on the issue you work on. So we read something which is not correct, which is not inaccurate, and we want to respond to that. So what can we do? So we can organize a press conference. We can do social media strategy, as many of you suggested here. We can do op-ed. We can, uh, of course, track the coverage and share, etc. And a lot more. Maybe nothing of this may work. Maybe we need to go with uh, what Emmeline had just suggested uh, about uh, creating a short video clip and posting it out on social media because it's about raising awareness and uh, challenging a wrong uh, interpretation or media which or uh, data which had come out. So, uh, so here you will find that the combination of different activities has been listed against certain things, but this is again suggestive. This may work, may not work. Uh, in different settings and in uh, for on different issues, it depends a lot on the context. Yeah, Shubha, go ahead. Uh, no, I think Bobby that uh, we just have forty five minutes to okay. wrap up this session totally. Oops. Okay. So and uh, and we have uh, a presentation also by a speaker in that included in that. So can we go on to the group work and we can just uh, test one of the tools we have given four tools uh, to achieve our objective so uh, to support media outreach uh, so can we do that along with it we, yeah, we sure go, go ahead please yeah. uh, so the, for the group activity for the group work uh, you we can announce that and uh, the four tools which we have we can just we can at least we have time to test at least one of those tools so can we move on to that Yes, you, you are, are you seeing it on the screen now? Yeah. I'm not seeing it on the screen right away. I, I can see preparing to support media outreach for tools to help draft advocacy documents. That is what I'm seeing. Are you seeing the Zoom screen or you on your? No, I'm seeing your Zoom screen, what you're sharing. I'm seeing the Zoom. All right. Okay. Okay. So, so friends, uh, so you want me to take it to the tool straight? Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. Yes. So uh, we have been talking a lot about Bobby has explained it so clearly that uh, what are we trying to achieve and uh, it could be an advocacy document like a media advisory or a media brief or press invitation and um, what tools can we use to help achieve uh, this what and we we have given four tools four sets of four different tools and the first is the nine star questions guide tool we have the inverted pyramid tool have your say tool and the speak your world tool all this is in the manual as you know so can we just go through the nine star questions guide tool i think it covers a lot of things which we might require uh, and then we can uh, have a hypothetical situation from the participants, what they want to do. So can we move on? The, uh, Bobby, can you just scroll it up a little bit? The nine star questions guide tool. I can't yes. see. It. Yes. And friends, I will just like to add one, one line, please. Uh, is that these four tools which uh, came across to us in our life uh, from different organizations, campaigns, and uh, media work which we have done. And all of you will find that all these four are actually similar in some way and a bit different from other but but it is almost similar and it but but um, these four tools and they may be a fifth tool six tool seven tool they may you might find many more approaches but the, these are just four tools which help us draft uh, some kind of advocacy document and it could be anything it could be press invitation it could be press release media advisory media memo media brief uh, op-ed, article, petition, slogan which goes in your banner, uh, any statement, declaration, other publication. So these four tools or one of these four has always has helped us a lot. So I just wanted to say that they, these are not, ex, you know, exclusionary or um, or totally different or unique or separate, but you will find a lot of overlap between these four as Shoba takes you through. So, uh, and we can pick one or two and uh, try to experiment that and you will see why I'm saying so. And of course, this is just one four, maybe the, none of this is very relevant for you. So, uh, of course, you should, we all should do what is most relevant to us. Over to you, Shoba. Right, right. That, that's very true. So uh, now the, okay, supposing we are going through this tool just as a guide tool. So the first is 
what do we want that's the first star question so now i want the audience uh, the participants to tell what do we want you can at least speak up or maybe write down in the chat box bobby is this the right way to go so that we can uh, yeah, please do go it go you do it and we can do it in the time which we have because yes. we have just half an hour for this i think or maybe we can stretch it a little bit so what do we want to do what 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 is the goal what 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 are we talking of so any suggestions from because this is our group work which we are doing right now uh, and we are just making use of one of the tools and as bobby said maybe this does not work maybe there is some other tool which we may have to use but any suggestions from the participants what is you just think of a hypothetical situation uh, which you want I to think, highlight yeah. by the way yes bobby yeah sorry i think I, it might be helpful if we take them through all the four tools and then okay. go with hypothetical situation and test it what okay. about that okay 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 quickly okay, okay. quickly or, or or we can do it the other way that uh, immediately come up show your screen and uh, the hypothetical situation and then we jump into a tool maybe that will be that will take uh, in the interest of time i was just yes thinking. please go ahead yeah go so, ahead. so what is a hypothetical situation should, should i stop sharing ma'am sorry for this uh no i would like the questions there and uh, okay you can uh, no, uh, then you how, want how to share a hypothetical situation yes uh, yes uh, can i can i can i just mention an hypothetical yes. situation uh, so i mean that's also something that i got to know very recently uh, so there are uh, these uh, correctional uh, rehabilitation centers in uh, vietnam uh, for uh, for people who uh, who abuse drugs and uh, you know the 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 policies are very um, uh, very strict and uh, you know they uh, i mean there is no uh, sy systemic approach uh, you know to address uh, people when they leave those rehabilitation centers so you know to uh, to, to highlight maybe that uh, that part if uh, the media can be used as a tool okay so the, the goal is uh, to draw media attention for rehabilitation of uh, please is is that the is uh, that a uh, hypothetical situation i mean unless if somebody has anything else to uh, you know maybe a less complicated thing uh, they can go ahead no we, we yes okay anybody else wants to say any situation I think so we can go with this one or everyone can say many thing but okay so let's the go with that one yeah. so uh, for the correctional centers for uh, drug users that we want to highlight that what uh, what is to be done once they uh, leave the center is that our situation is that the hypothetical situation no yes? uh, actually shobha may i please interrupt yes please do okay so uh, so uh, before using any of these tools we need to uh, why are we using these tools these tools are to help us draft a advocacy document it could be press invite press release etc so uh, so that is why we are using this going to use this tool right or uh, some right. some kind of so so uh, so now we need to come up with a hypothetical situation that this is a situation and we need to do uh we need to write a press release or we need to write a press invite or we need to do both or we need to write an article or we need a slogan for the banner or we need the statement a petition so be very specific so that we can immediately launch into an experiment with two three approaches yes. sorry go ahead so do we need an advocacy document for it or do so, we need a, a so press Abhiti, are we going to write a press invite a press release a press conference on article or we need a different situation it could also be that people who use drugs they address a press conference before the world aids day yes what do you say to that yeah yes participants what or does this sound okay
Oh, there is a there is a quiet in the room. Are we tired of speaking? You need the exercise. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get up and stretch our limbs. Do do what? Do we need a uh, can we do we need a press conference where you want the drug users to come or to not sure of that where if they would like to address that any other suggestions so that we can start working on it please or do we stick to this yes please wake up now please we want we want to hear from you any hypothetical situation bobby are you going to suggest another one or do we go with this correctional camp thing yeah we can sure it's a very important issue uh, but i think we need to come up with a situation that this is what we want to do yes so yes. do we want to organize a report so are we doing a report on that report launch press conference press invite or we come up with a different situation yes so uh, maybe you can go through the tool and then it will become more familiar probably shobha okay so as we the first Just imagine we are writing a press release Yes, six, we are launching a sixteen days campaign in Manila. And okay, uh, okay. Yeah. and perhaps maybe we are doing a a curtain raiser press conference to focus uh, to focus on that sixteen days of activism. Are we doing that? Are we doing a press conference for it? Or, or or are we just putting up a banner or are we um, uh, any, any other means just a slogan or or we want to have a conference or a gathering of people what, so what do we want we have to decide and uh, who is going to be our audience who can, who, who do we want to be part of this and we have said here it could be the a reporter we are having a press conference so we have a press invite we invite the reporters we are we inviting the local media or are we doing it at a national level uh, maybe we want to focus on uh, local awareness and local uh, media so that 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 is the audience that we have to decide what our uh, objective is of the activity which we are going to take up and then what do the what do our audience need to hear what do they want to hear do they want to hear from uh, uh, the people who have been affected do they want to hear from uh, women do they want to hear from uh, the local leaders uh, what is happening or uh, different agencies because this 16 day uh, activism is covering so many issues so um, we are starting with on 25th of november so are we focusing on uh, violence against women so what what messages are we wanting to convey and then from whom we want to hear these messages and there it says survivor activist i think in this case it could be survive i am not saying i think but we may be thinking that does it, do we want to hear from government official any government data on it from a uh, from a survivor that what what they have, do we want to listen to their stories activists who are working in the field then we are talk local voices that, that again depends upon where we want that outreach to go global voices un official yes, that sir. that could be for a global uh, global outreach right and uh, uh, shubha, yes. shubha sorry yesoda has a has a hand raised yes yes yesoda Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. Good morning to all again. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. 
Yeah, actually, uh, regarding violence against women, it starts on 25th November. So at the community level, I think we need to start up with. So community, maybe the survivors who are really, who want to come forward, maybe okay. their identity they do not want, maybe in changing their name or coming up with their own uh, uh, survivor, I mean, the issues what they have faced and uh, calling a media journalist to be part of that community level activities and how to um, uh, bring sensitization awareness through these uh, peer educators and so and the problems within the community level then step by step like starting from the community level may be in uh, involving the same peer educators like those who are survivors whether it is, uh, I mean, not only violence against women or uh, sexual violence, any survivors. I mean, to say we are talking about now gender based violence. Yes, yes, so that you're very right. What, what we have, what is listed here is actually who of these we would like to hear from. So it doesn't have to be all of them. So, that, yeah. yeah, that will depend upon our uh, what we are trying to achieve. You're right. At the local level, we may. Uh, we are trying to re uh, raise local awareness and bring put spotlight on what is happening at the local level. So, so you yeah, need it, yeah. yes. Yeah, maybe I'm not very much clear what really actually uh, what uh, I mean, like awareness programs, sensitization programs, all this, how we are going to do inviting the media journalists to be, uh, you know, how to make the report, uh, maybe involving the uh, survivors to be part of this, narrating their stories and inviting local leaders, religious leaders, where we can bring some change in understanding and bringing laws or policies regarding that uh, community or in schools, different levels. I hope I'm understanding properly what the real uh, uh, picture of what you want to say. Uh, yes. Maybe media journalists can help us making a report by involving all these, I mean, uh, uh, survivors and stakeholders who are part of it. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Bobby, can you continue from here, please? Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Yasuda. Very important point, Yasuda. And yes, uh, so uh, so you will find that what Yasuda has just said is so important and that can be a part of the approach as well. So who do they need to, for example, in the uh, so when whenever when we are engaging media or out media, doing the media outreach, we uh, for example organizing a press conference, let's say, and what Yasoda just said, uh, we need to we may like to invite the faith based leaders, religious leaders, or community leaders, community voices, women groups, human rights defenders, other supportive officials. It is up to the issue who you feel like is important. Why, from uh, what point of view? Uh, from several point of view. One point of view is we want inclusion. So we definitely want community voices up there on the panel. Uh, then of course, uh, for instance, uh, if it is about evidence, Maybe we need survivors up there, human rights defenders up there. It depends upon the issue we are trying to uh, to work on. Delivery. How do they want? To, how should we uh, make them here? Who are them? It could be the government. It could be local authority. It could be uh, your national government. It could be UN agencies. It could be the some other country. It, it, it could be anyone. So we need to, how can we do that? So, uh, so should we organize a press conference? Should we do a press release? Uh, or, 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 edit, or should we meet the editor and try to request if the editor can consider the, uh, writing about it in editorial? Or should we go to a writer and say, okay, can you write an op-ed article for this? Or several other ways of doing this. And the, and the sixth NSQ is, nine star questions is, uh, what do we have? That is a very important thing. For example, if you want to organize press conference, you may need to uh, rent a room or find a room, find a space. 
uh, a space which is accessible to the government to the media which is easy to find uh, which has facilities enough for the holding that press conference etc uh, uh, gaps do we have people who can write a press release do we have people who can take photos do we have people who can reach out to the media invite them and um, have some chance of of, of uh, having the media in the room and then journey to the thousand mile begin with the first step if we have to remove a mountain we have to pick the first stone so first step is very important how do we begin to plan it so as someone had asked when do we invite media one day before 10 days before so again that is very variable but definitely we have to inform them in advance now that advance i think it could be at least minimum should be one day before if it is possible but there can be situations which are emergency situations uh, either for example cases of sexual and other forms of gender based violence for example natural calamities so called natural calamities or it could be another humanitarian disasters where we do not have the liberty of time and it might be very urgent evaluation is how do we tell whether it is working whether uh, what we are what we are trying to achieve whether we have achieved it or not uh, so let us come up with a hypothetical situation again i am saying this because um uh, 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 think of think of why why you want to write a press release or invite media for to a press conference all of you and we will at least listen to few of you after few, few minutes so you have few minutes while we go through the inverted pyramid tool this is the tool friends which we use for uh, writing press release op ed articles report statements i find it very useful shobha to find it very useful and you will find that it is about five w's and one h and that is who so in the first para we should mention this see what happens is that when we read a article you will find that most of the people will read the headline maximum number of people will read the headline slice slightly less number of people will start reading the article beyond the headline and in the maybe let's say first para and even less number of people will go to the second para even less people will go to the third para and even less number of people will go to the fourth fifth para and very very few people will actually read the full article to the last word right so you and i as advocates what should we do my personal request and suggestion is and this is what i often try to do is that say what you want to say right in the headline number 2 that is the most important point second the more details provide more details in the first para then even uh, uh, more de important details in the second para and likewise you know uh, and the last part as this this model shows is something which can even be cut by the copy editors and others so if this is how you frame your press release and if the journalist has a space only for say this much of content in terms of space for newspaper etc then at least your most important points get covered so uh, uh so this is one way of doing it and of course this is not the not, not the best or not the, uh, this is just one way the other one is sdn's speak your world tool and here you will find and again i said you will find similar approaches there are a lot of similarities between different tools uh, we, we worked with hdn for almost a decade in northern thailand and uh, in south africa and here you will find they followed this approach that they will come up with the lead first and what is the lead it is a basically it is the first sentence of a story that uh, makes the reader want to read more make it a good one and it is less than 30 words it just sets the tone it could be a hard lead or soft lead but basically this is where which is the very important you say the most important thing up in the lead then you provide the nut graph and here in hdn speak your world tool you found if we find that they used f the five w's and one h in the second part Then why should I read this? This you and they will they will provide more important details here, followed by here, and in the last they will provide the least important details. 
So you will again find a lot of similarities here. This is a tool, then uh, this is the third tool which we would like to introduce to you is a have your say tool. The first is listen. I think, for example, just imagine a scenario that of uh, th three of you, three of your friends have are here in the room, in this room. And after this uh, session, you all want to write uh, an, uh, an, uh, a long email to all your team members in sharing what happened today in this training. How did Bobby and Shubha bore you? <laughs> so uh, here is, this is important because the first step is listen. We need to listen to the discussion and presentation in the meet, non-judgmental way. Try to self-question at times if it requires that kind of uh, approach. The second is the heart, because when you, when, uh, you know, uh, when the uh, session is over, then we all need to come up with what is the central theme? What is your headline? If you and I need to, uh, after this training, what is one line which we like to tell? Uh, how did this training go? It, it was not good. It was very good. It was useful. It was somewhat useful. There can be so many ways you can frame this. Uh, so what is, what is the most central theme? And th we should not rush through this because what I say is this is the heart. You know, once you identify the real heart, once you identify that this is the core of the story, then it becomes very easy for me to come up with the headline, to come up with the first lead, if you are following this approach, uh, the lead, or if you are following the inverted pr pyramid, it becomes very easy for you to draft this because now you exactly know what you're talking about and how you want to frame the whole story and narrative and conversation. The third in the have your say tool is outline. You, out, you put up an outline. Ki, okay, in the first time I'm going to tell this because this is the most important part. Then the next most important part and likewise the quote, most important quote, next most important quote in terms of relevance and priority, the way you, you find it is important. And of course you need to, uh, to write it. So uh, sh yes, Shubha, over to you. No, 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 please continue, please continue. Isn't All right, thank okay, you. any questions, anything? Yes, As Asma, this is a part of the manual. We will again share on over email, uh, the whole email. So let us imagine that we are going to organize a press conference in Manila on uh, tomorrow on 24th of November and invite uh, journalists to, uh, to tell them that uh, 16 days of activism is going to be launched. So what do we want? We want to tell the journalists that 16 days of activism is going to be launched. Who can give it to us? Come on, who can give it? Should we invite the editors? Come on participants, unmute and tell me. Should we invite editors, reporters, local reporters, photographers, marketing people? Yes, Manover. Hello, hi. Yes, Manover, please. Manover yes. Hussain, we could not can't hear you. Please unmute yourself. Okay, uh, we yes. can email them. Yes. We can. Uh, besides, we can call. Uh, we can call and follow up the editors. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, great idea, Manover Hussain. So Manover is 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 right. And Asma Akhtar has said that we should invite editors to assign a senior relevant um, reporter. Oh, very good. Very thank you, Asma. Right. Perfect. All of you are perfect. See, uh, so yes, that is an approach. So we, we can invite journalists, we can email them, we can call them, we can WhatsApp them, we can go to their offices and meet them in person. Depends upon where we are, but we are in Manila. So yes. Okay. So, so yes. So we, we email them, call them, WhatsApp them or whatever communication channel we invite we want a local reporter to come to us because this is the manila news not the national reporter not the op-ed page editor edit and as asma has said if we ask the editor then editor can assign a local uh, a journalist to come to our press conference yes great 
uh, Kalyani Thapa has said that we can invite local journalists, radio jockey. Yes, absolutely. We should invite radio jockey, local journalists, social media influencers, bloggers, uh, who else? Photographers, photojournalists are so important. We need uh, that, they, they, that is important, right? Yeah. So yes, so you are very right in, uh, in knowing that who is the audience. Messages, what do they need to hear? Come on, come up with a few messages. What is a message? One message is, it's a global campaign which we are launching in Manila. What is the global campaign? 16 days of activism against sexual and other forms of gender-based violence. And we are launching. What is the other message? Just hypothetical. Hypothetical, it could be that uh, I'm just suggesting one and then you all should suggest me more. What about COVID-19 and violence? Just imagine. What about what happened? We should involve editors, reporters, journalists, political leaders, human rights activists, researchers. Right. Right. Thank you, Surinath Nayak. We absolutely, totally agree. Surinath Nayak has even went ahead and said that we should invite other civil society groups and other kind of journalists as well. Yes. Uh, Asma Akhtar says how COVID-19 increased gender-based violence. That should also be in the one of the core messages. Good. Anna Lisa Monnes said increase of violence during lockdown. Yes, Anna Lisa, very important point. In India, there is evidence now that the violence increased by 46% more reported violence against women uh, to the government. And we all know how underreported it is during COVID-19 lockdown. Uh, Mahison Rashti says the main theme of the campaign can be also sent with the messages. Yes, very true. Yasoda Kura, child abuse and violence against women increased during COVID-19. Yes, child abuse, very important point again. And we uh, lockdown situation created an atmosphere where the perpetrator of the violence was locked in with the people who were so vulnerable, including children, women and girls, and LGBTQIA plus people and others. So true. So very good friends. So we know that now we know who are the, what are the messages and we can go ahead uh, uh, with that. Uh, government resources were diverted for COVID response. Yes, Annalisa, very important. Shamima Parveen says, do not stop the education of girls due to COVID-19. Right. Let's stand against girls' marriage. Absolutely. Uh, Selena Men uh, Menzies says, address COVID stigma, which leads to absolutely Selena. Selena, you should uh, say more because what I feel is that we have gone back on, uh, on what we learned from HIV. HIV uh, taught the world how important it is to rights-based approach is so important to fight stigma and discrimination. But in COVID-19, we blamed the people who were infected with COVID. We jailed them. We profiled them early on in uh, several places, including ours. So Salina's point is so true too. So friends, you're very right. And uh, here you will see the so messages can be, you know, you, now you know that depending upon prevent unwanted pregnancy due to COVID-19, yes. Proper use of family plan. Yes, family planning methods, immunization, sexual and reproductive health services, all so much of them were adversely impacted during COVID-19 and so much so deeply related to uh, the, our theme. Mahison says, according to the perspective of Bangladesh, increase in child marriage due to COVID-19 and prevention of child marriages, access to the SRH care. Yes, Yasuda, right. Right. So friends, good. So thanks a lot for this. Uh, is so much of engagement. Yasuda, you want to say something? Unmute and say quick. Yasuda, your hand is raised. So you want to say something? Please do. Yeah, actually, family planning methods, I would like to say they were not unable to access to so uh, abortions and all were, uh, they were unable to reach so naturally population will be much higher during this one, two years of log, I mean, few months of lockdown. Yeah, so true. Absolutely, yes, Sudha. So, yes, very important point because of family planning services and other sexual and reproductive health services were so adversely impacted. And uh, she's right. Uh, the, uh, the, there was a boom of, uh, of uh, unintended pregnancies uh, in even in communities where I'm living in currently. Uh, 
so uh, so what uh, do they need? so messages are, can be yeah sorry there are more uh, very good messages sure, from sure. mary and go ahead, go ahead, pe people with disability especially women and children who were most affected of uh, covid 19 abused by family and relatives most so disability point factor should is very important then kamla also says covid 19 and disability related issues and messages right very important point okay dr farhana again against child marriage and supporting girl education which which took a back seat during the covid period right and mm. rajal has also made a point a very mm. important one on uh, many dropouts have been sent mm. due to covid uh, seen mm. yeah and pratichaya you want to say something you have your hand raised pratichaya from nepal pratichaya uh actually uh what yeah am i audible no. yes, yes yes clear Yes, yes. Uh, so, um, yes, even in, in Nepal, you know, the situation for persons with disabilities were so pathetic that uh, uh, they could not have access to basic needs like food, clothing, shelter, their employment uh, was confiscated from them. And, you know, uh, yeah, so, uh, so, so they had accessibility related issues in Nepal because of COVID-19. Right. Right, absolutely. So, so true, Patichaya. And most likely, this this will be so true for people uh, for, uh, with disabilities in uh, most of our countries we come from. And so, yes. So, basically, just for the purpose of time, in interest of time. Uh, so, messages you can see that there are so many varied uh, spectrum of messages which we just just poured in. Uh, right. So now we can prioritize what is most important message which should be part of the press conference, right? And messenger, messengers, who do they need it to hear it from? Who should speak in the press conference? Should we invite? Who should we invite? Come on. Unmute and say, raise your hand, chat. Those most at... Uh, affected by the uh, COVID, I think they should come up and speak up. Absolutely, Selena. Right. Golden point. You know why? Because affected communities are at the heart of responses. Affected communities are not just part of the problem. They are the they are the core. They are the heart of the solutions in finding solutions that work for the community. So so true, Selena. Thank you so much for saying this. Yeah, we even, must have yeah I, I feel that even uh, yeah go ahead go ahead i i feel that it, it, the, uh, people are living with it for a long period of time but when it comes to covid people are not coming to testing because once they get this tag of covid they don't they have been treated uh, they are treated like untouchables and then nobody is coming to visit them. So they don't want to go for testing. By the time it is too late for them to survive. So it is very important for this, this to have to be addressed. Right, absolutely. Serena, so true. And, and this has fueled the stigma and so true. And that is why rights-based approaches are so important. So thanks for making that point. And uh, friends, a lot of things are pouring in. Uh, local community leaders, stakeholders, champions, national leaders, community leaders, community survivors, influencers, local leaders. Thank you, Kalyani, Shamima, Dr. Farhana, Kelvin. Anna, and also she says government officials also need to talk about their response. Right. And Kamala Upriti, yes. And the officials of local authority are responsible to manage all the issues. Yes, Kamala Upriti, right. We should uh, try to engage government officials too who, who need to be held to account or who need to at least share what, they, what they're doing and how can they do better and how can communities play a role too. Yes, Soda, yes. Great point. Influenced leaders make a difference. Yes, absolutely. Kelvin, at times, those who are affected are afraid to share their stories. Yes, very important point, Kelvin. At times, th there can be a situation where people who are most affected, they may, they may uh, see, we will hear it tomorrow from uh, more experts. But right now, we do not have to do harm. We don't want to do more harm. So we have to make sure that those who are most affected most at risk. We are not harming them in any way by exposing them in a press conference. 
so uh, in terms of confidentiality in terms of their safety in terms of the well being in terms of their consent have we taken their consent have we informed them very well what where are we asking them to speak etc etc so you, this is very important so anna lisa monis we also want to hear yes absolutely so true we want them munawwar hussain yes youth of course if it is relevant yes youth and when when we say youth we should not forget the people uh, the elderly as well because many issues are very very and we should not forget any more any other community communities that are relevant to that particular press conference theme it could be persons with disabilities indigenous peoples lgbtqia plus people uh, people with uh, specific conditions if it is relevant up to you survival up to you like depending upon how you frame it and how the issue and what is most relevant asma akhtar for a press conference we need a government data and respect yes to accessibility of services including related to gender based violence and srhr which is not available and neeraj yes. says that family members of those who have been affected with covid and who are who have also faced the same discrimination as right Yes, so right. asma asma uh, your question is very valid we we often do not have any data and again i will remind i shared it yesterday that one of my friends 20 22 years ago said that you know data from community is most important why because that is data with a soul with a with a soul that is qualitative data that is those are human stories personal stories they move mountains so while government comes up with quantitative data or other agencies help us in coming up with reliable data because there is often very lack of data or uh, not a uh, fully representative data so you are so true we are uh, working in that kind of a situation let us hope that we have it but right now whatever data whatever evidence whatever human stories qualitative data we can come up with community data we can come up with uh, to prove our, to prove our point we should paulo just because us go yes absolutely covid has changed so much so true Uh, yeah, anything else shubha sorry can, so no more. can no can yeah. i interrupt because i think yeah. we need one full day also to right, continue right, with right. this and we just have 5 minutes to wrap okay. this up all right okay so i, I will do that, that. Yes, yes yes please yes. sorry 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 yes. for that so in terms of delivery friends again it just basically means for how are we going to deliver this message how we how should we write a press release press invite etc or op-ed editorial article radio program social media tool make a video for social media so there were so many ideas which you people have come up with so we and i uh, uh and i will come back to this uh, just just in a minute resources may what what have we got we may not have data so how to make a point so uh, uh so like what do we have maybe we we don't have data but we have a a person who is willing to share a story anonymously okay so uh, so likewise we need to do a reality check on what do we have what are the gaps and how can we fill it how can we find some solutions maybe we don't have a room so can we request a room of a partner organization in a central centrally located one for example to host a press conference and how do we begin an evaluation uh, because time is running out so yes tak bahadur tamang right absolutely thank you kelvin for new slip idea yes so about press press release you will again see that these tools will help you a lot in writing we could may help you at all may if it is relevant on 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 drafting the press release like who what where when why how in the first para this, uh, then um um you know other import, most important points and messages which you have coined with the most important quote following the first para and uh, then lesser important details etc and the least important details towards the end and of course you will have in the press release you will you will do, we usually give a contact information for further follow up etc also also uh, right yes so the very important point so now i will stop speaking i have done a lot of speaking and now we'll hear more from ashok bhai but uh, uh before that if if you all have any question regarding what i have just shared today so we can briefly take few
And here in the manual, you have a pre-interview checklist. Uh, this is to, uh, you know, when we, when we are trying to do interviews and uh, so for example, if you are running an organization um, and as someone of you had said that that person don't want to be interviewed or want to go anonymous. So how do we interview that person? So, so there are certain very important checklists which you might uh, find it of use if it is of use. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Shubha. Yeah, no, I think we, uh, the part, please put in your comments in the chat box, I think, uh, even as we proceed, uh, because I'm sorry to say, but <laughs> we have another session after a little while. And so we have to stick to the time. Very sorry, because this is such an interesting, uh, interesting ongoing exercise. And I would have loved to continue for another one hour or so. Uh, but uh, I think we need to invite now our uh, uh, special resource person for today. Uh, Bobby, what do you say to be? Yeah, sure. Uh, please go ahead. Yes. And uh, yes. I will keep responding in the chat. And maybe yes. after the session ends, uh, if someone wants to hang out, we can do that. Yes, Thank yes, you. yes. So uh, now I welcome Ashok Ramsarup, uh, an award-winning journalist from South Africa who has over 20, 40 years of experience in the field of journalism. And he was formerly a senior producer at South African Broadcasting Corporation. And he will share with us some suggestions based on his experiential knowledge on how to increase media participation for advancing gender equality. Over to you, Ashokji. Yes, Ashok Bhai, please. Are you muted? We can't hear you. Is he there, Bobby? He was very much there. Yes, yes, yes. He's... Yes, Ashok ji, we are waiting for you. Is there, maybe there is something wrong with his internet connection. Let me ask him if he's there. So meantime, friends, uh, please yes. do try to uh, check out these four tools and try to imagine a situation like uh, or or use it in your day-to-day -day work like in, if it is helpful if it is of any use in drafting things or um, uh, it could be any media any kind of advocacy document it could be a press invite it could be a press release it could be a slogan uh, or it could be uh, yeah, just 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 any 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 kind of communication to a thing which you feel is it necessary for your day to day work. So let me let me while Shubha is checking with the uh, Ashok Ramsuru from South Africa, let me go. Th let me say that okay, we are drafting a banner for our uh, press conference. What what slogan should go behind? Right, that is the goal. So who is the audience? Who do we want it to show? So this will inform us the language, for example. So we, are we trying to do? Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. can I interrupt? He's saying he's speaking, but perhaps he can't be heard. Let's see. So maybe he, he has he to can... log back in. He, he, so just ask him to. Uh, log uh, in again? Yes, log in again. Please. Okay, okay. Okay. So friends, we are, we are trying to come up with a slogan for the banner, right? Uh, for the press conference so we, or maybe for the campaign on the street or something so so depending upon who is going to read that banner you you know that uh, that will inform a lot in the terms of choice of language choice of image uh, for example if you are doing it in a remote area where literacy rate is very low there is no point of writing text then maybe we we need to use visuals someone said cartoons sure so we need to be more creative on what we are, what, what, who is our audience? What are the messages? What are, what do they need to hear? So depending upon your audience, you can think of which, what, what kind of message should go on that banner, right? See, even if for that one line message on a banner, this tool can be very helpful. 
who do they need to hear it from maybe we need some logos which or maybe we need some names photos of people communities can identify with uh, and how do we uh, get get them to hear it of course we will place it at strategic position i will place it the banner where it is seen most what resources have we got maybe we have a paint and brush so okay so we will just get a paint and brush and some white paper and try to make that banner or maybe we can ha we have a computer and we can design a one and then go to a printer and get it printed or find a friend who can help us do that so yeah so this is a this is i like this tool nsq helps us in uh, more clear thinking and in especially in drafting things He was is, there a uh, sorry no, he's me? trying to log in he said i'll log in again because okay. but still i see a red dot in front of his name and so you may continue bobby what is because he is not able to come i'll call him up again okay Okay, so Anna Lisa Moniz has said that was there a major shift in communication strategy because of COVID? Yeah, I think a lot has changed, uh, Anna. It's a good question. Um, it is a lot, a lot has changed, and I think uh, one of the big changes is that uh, suddenly uh, you find that um, um, uh, like a health has in terms of health, uh, health has become a front page news. Earlier, very rarely health took the front page spotlight, but now health reporters, because health is not report, reported by political correspondent, business correspondent, trade correspondent on day-to-day -day basis. On day-to-day -day basis, these are health correspondents who follow health all the year round. And usually that their news uh, seldom came into front page. So, but now it is like every day health news is the most important news, most important political news also. So the, the whole reality that politics is the ultimate determinant of health justice, gender justice, economic justice, social justice, that, that almost came true with that. But communication has also become very difficult in the COVID times too, because of uh, uh, so many more challenges. Um, which we are confronting now. Even media organizations are confronting a huge amount of pressure and uh, challenges. Lot, that whole domain has changed a lot. Uh, social media uh, landscape has also changed, has, uh, changed a lot. And people are uh, lucky people. I mean, people who have access to internet resources, a uh, lot of them are using tools like Zoom, Google Meet, Team, etc. a lot, WhatsApp, etc. Things have Things have changed a lot, yes. And that has that will probably change our way of communication also in terms of gender justice and human rights. So earlier in-person meetings were more of a norm, but now I think hybrid will be a norm where in-person goes, but also there has to be virtual means of participation, which is in interest of climate justice too. Sorry, Shubha, Sorry uh, no, no, but I think he is having internet issues. He said he will try one last time. So let's see if uh, Ashok ji, are you there? Yeah. He is having uh, severe internet issues at his end. So okay. he has been trying, but uh, he could not succeed. So I'm, I'm really sorry for that. And as I mentioned, there are certain things which are beyond our control. So, so perhaps uh, we will wrap up uh, today's session. Bobby, please uh, finish what you were saying. Please. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, friends, if there is any last minute question, please type it in or raise your virtual hand or unmute and speak. And uh, we'll take the last one. How do you, Anna has said, how do you think we can take advantage of this shift in promoting gender equality and gender justice? I think, friends, it depends. Um, so, see, the again, I will go back to the uh, to what was being discussed yesterday. Uh, media also is an industry and so is social media industry. So if you look at uh, let me, uh, please give me a minute uh, of listening why I'm saying so. Social media is great. Media is great. Uh, we, we can use it, but there are problems too. So, uh, uh, so while we talk of social media, the corporations that run these social media platforms 
at the end of the day they are huge giant corporations they are probably one of the biggest brands in the world e even in terms of monetary wealth so what when we talk of corporate capture when we talk of development justice when we talk of gender equality and gender justice uh when we talk of human rights health rights economic rights when we talk of redistributive justice uh, which we which each one of us want each one of us wants to live a full healthy fulfilling life but uh, there, you know so point is when we talk of these corporations which are also social which own these social media platforms you find that it is often a major uh, you will find lot of problems in that model the the kind, the way the social media like in terms of confidentiality data uh, so, so so i can speak a lot more but probably you people know it a lot more too what i'm trying to say here so uh, and same goes for print media same goes for tv radio electronic uh any kind of other kind of media tools too you will find that they also become so giant and big that uh, their interest of very few of the people who own that media that is what is takes the precedence or that is that is where the decisions are being made and lot and the interest of most of the people who are working in that whole industry is are is not being met and one very good example is there is a commission here in the in india which talks of wage rights which talks of labor rights of uh, people who work in the media industry but that has seldom got implemented in any media organization despite journalists have gone to the court and they have done so such so much of advocacy to implement those uh, rights and that one of the lawyers who was involved was thampan thomas who is the national president of socialist party india so uh, uh so so even that industry is very problematic and why i was giving that shift because the, during covid 19 in covid 19 exposed yes shubha sorry for that <laughs> sorry but i think ashok ji is there and maybe if if he can uh, ashok ji can online. please test uh, yeah hello yes. ashok bye no because he has re he re entered the room so maybe he is not and i could see him there as a participant i'm sorry bobby for interrupting you all the no, time no, but not at all. so ashok ji can you please test if you are audible to us can you please unmute yourself he has unmuted but he can't be heard okay i think i i we give up in fact i give up on this now please okay yes bobby go back to okay so i will just finish so yes. what i was trying to say is covid 19 has changed a lot all our lives are changed uh, more importantly in terms of communication and gender equality the and media outreach i think we also need to recognize how media shifts have happened in terms of economic impact in terms of more dominance of these corporations smaller community led newspapers news organizations come or or medium size either they have been they have they are struggling or they have been acquired by bigger giants or more corporations have invested in in certain media and uh, if you look at global level or country level you will find what i'm trying to say one important newspaper which uh, i used to write for in thailand has gone online now has stopped print publication altogether for example so a lot of changes are happening in social media landscape lot of changes have happened if you look at who is investing where you will also find some kind of trend but as gender equality advocates as human rights advocates this is our we, we also need to seize this moment because inequal inequality was never so much in in spotlight ever before uh, covid 19 every covid 19 has forced each one of us to realize why health is so important is so central to economic justice friends before to covid 19 i am sure you and i all of us remember there were big economists in the world world bank economists and all economists used to do case studies to prove math, to do mathematical modeling of to prove a point that of the economic importance of doing tuberculosis program of uh, economic advantage of doing health now you don't need to prove anyone everyone understands if health collapses the whole economy comes to a standstill 
if so inequality is is better understood corporate capture is better understood look at the farmers struggle in, the, in india for example it is it, the corporate capture was right in the heart without using the word corporate capture their analysis was totally uh, in line with the with corporate capture and development justice struggles so what i'm trying to say here is that these are sh there are important shifts which have happened but in terms of media things might have become become more challenging uh, uh, so we need to take at the, the positive news is that we can take leverage we can leverage upon these uh, better more receptive media now to inequality to rising violence against women, for example, and girls and LGBTQIA plus people, for uh, rising stigma, lack of rights-based approaches in health, in COVID-19, which is regressive. These are regressive measures because we have we are using, uh, we are trying to police uh, things. Or for example, yesterday I read in Myanmar, military has said no one can wear mask or sunglasses or cap because of security concerns. Imagine, the whole world is saying we are masked because of COVID-19 health protocols. But for uh, their military security, they have come up with this kind of a ruling, which is so counterproductive to health, right? So, so I'm just saying that, you know, this is also a time for us to uh, make sure that we keep pushing human rights, keep pushing gender equality, keep pushing gender equality in context of development justice. Because at the end of the day, all of us want the same goal. At least I believe most of us want the same goal. There is very tiny number of people who are actually siphoning up, or owning up all the wealth, whether it is natural resources or money or power, very small 1%, but at the cost of 99%. So these 99% of you and me need to come together and use this media also. And most of the people who work in media will be supportive to you. This is what I feel, uh, except for a very tiny number of those who will feel threatened by, uh, you know, uh, by development justice model. You know who will feel threatened by development justice model? Those people who own disproportionate amount of wealth, power, entitlements, rights, they will feel threatened by development justice. They will feel threatened by gender equality. If I am patriarchal person, then I will feel threatened by gender equality. It is not about me. It is about gender justice. And that is why people who those 1% will not, uh, will not be able to hold for too long. Keep the faith, friends. Hi. We have a lot to do. No time to die. <laughs> okay, back to Shubha. Yeah, very well said, Bobby. And really very well said and we have to keep the faith and we have and as as we know the in darkness only can we see that we can aspire and work towards for rays of light to come and i'm sure we with this we come to the end of the first session for today that for that was designed for gender justice advocates and my sincere thanks to each one of you for really making this session so vibrant and i wished we could have had we could have gone longer on this but we have a second session for today also for media participants, which will begin at 3 p.m. Bangkok time. And some of you had expressed an interest to attend that second session as well. And uh, I think you were replied on email that you're most welcome to do so. Uh, and so, tomorrow- so Sorry, yes. sorry, sure, but uh, so the second session today begins after one, one hour, 15 minutes from now, one hour, 15 yes, minutes from yes. now. So if you want to attend, be most welcome. Yes. Uh, otherwise we see you tomorrow, same time. Yes, yes, tomorrow sir. is the last day of the training. Tomorrow's session will begin at 11 a.m. and end at 12.30 p.m. Bangkok time. And all participants are welcome to attend the session. Zoom link to join remains the same. So goodbye till then. Namaste. Namaste.